watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. Max series. That's right. In case you have forgotten, we have a schedule that we like to abide by. And these Action Max have been scheduled and lined up for months now. It's just, we just fell upon the second season and the holiday season just right together. So we skipped over a bunch of what would have been regularly scheduled action, at the action max this is but they are back now also we don't want you to forget sunday is that yizzles it's that yizzles chosen episodes for her birthday max that's going on sundays remember everyone every other sunday we're gonna have a sunday max so basically every other weekend is max out weekend max out weekend so just mark your calendars for that. Because it's just the Yizzle, all by herself. All by her strong self, hosting all by her strong self. But that's all we have for right now. We're just going to go on and get right into this next Action Max lineup. But first, Yizzle, what pray thou therefore art thou? Do dost thy need to get upon thyself? They need to go get their salt a heaping bowl of their favorite part of the bowl. And stay with us from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Sudoka! It's a Saturday time! On the only place to be for Saturday mornings. The only place to be for the Yizzle's birthday, Max. And the only place to be for KJ and the Yizzle, Action Max, Feature Max, and Family Max. <gasps> Saturday morning cartoon Max out! CMDF, Combined Miniature Defense Force. Project Fantastic Voyage. Process Miniaturization. Authority, Top Secret, Highest Clearance. Team Jonathan Kidd, Commander. Guru, Master of Mysterious Powers. Erica Lane, Doctor, Biologist. Busby Birdwell, Scientist, Inventor, Builder of the Voyager. Mission, in their miniaturized form, to combat the unseen, unsuspected enemies of freedom. Time limit, 12 hours. The greatest wizard of all time, predict the future. Yes, I see something. I see a great city destroyed by a tidal wave. <laughs> I see a, a huge mountain swallowed by the earth. I will show you an even more amazing trick. I predict that anyone who does not believe in my powers will vanish. Instantly. Fools! Soon, no one will dare laugh at the magnificent Mephisto. <laughs> I don't get it. Ah, it's more mumbo jumbo. This guy's as bad as Guru. I say he's not all there. Mr. Kid, 
Well, I'll admit some strange things have happened lately, but I'm afraid I agree with Busby. So do I. Well, then, I think we all agree this so-called wizard is nothing more than an ordinary carnival fake. Fools! You shall see. I predict that in a short time, you too shall be destroyed. <laughs> These messages will be right back. I'd do anything to get Fred's yummy fruity pebbles. Fred Rock Jones! Tastes fruity delicious. Barney! Time to get into the swing of things. House fruity or cocoa pebble cereal, part of this nutritious breakfast. You ever dabble delicious? These glasses from Pebbles give you private eyes. So you can look real cool and not be recognized. You can see out, but they can't see inside. Pull around stones to keep your fans mystified. Private eyeglasses, what I need specially marked box of Post Pebble cereal. Look! It's a time bomb! Kid, quickly. Now, would someone mind telling me what's going on here? We had to be sure. That's why we took the chance. Sure what? That it was really the magic crystal of Kabbalah, the stone of the ancient magicians which causes the evil events its master predicts to occur. For hundreds of years, it has been lost. Now, somehow, this carnival wizard has found it and mastered its evil powers. It must be destroyed before he can use it again. Well, what's the problem? It's only a piece of rock. The magic crystal of Kabbalah cannot be harmed from the outside. It is invulnerable. Ridiculous. Just round up this magic marvel and leave it to me. I'll get rid of it. All right, Busby. Get set up. We'll bring in Mephisto the Magnificent. You amuse me, Professor. Do you think you can stop me by arresting me? I think we can take care of that fiendish crystal ball. <laughs> you destroy the crystal? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Take your last look, Guru. Nothing can stand up to this laser. It's still there. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. There is but one way. He who would destroy the magic crystal must penetrate to the evil energy at its very core. We must go inside. Ready for miniaturization, Mr. Kidd? Yes, sir. And your passenger? I still don't see why we have to take him along. Because we'll be safer where we can keep an eye on him. <laughs> Don't be too sure, Mr. Kid. Activate process. Miniaturization complete. Full process. Activate me. Well, here we go again. Can you get in one of those cracks, Busby? I'll try. Busby, slow up! I can't! It's being pulled by something! Ooh, wow! Oh, that was too close! Hey! Who turned out the lights? What's happening? I don't know. Fools! I warned you not to trifle with the occult! Look out! Turn us, Busby! This place is crazy! There's an opening. Head for it, Busby. Where are we now? We are inside the magic crystal. Well, wherever we are, it looks like we'll be here for a while. Better land, Busby. We'll see if we can figure out where we are. It feels solid enough. It looks it, too, but what can it be? It's a maze, Miss Lane. What? Where are you? Here I am. Hey, come back here! A 
an endless maze from which there is no escape. <laughs> He's over there. Come on. Wait. Do not chase him. You will spend the rest of your lives here. All 12 hours of them. <laughs> I'll get them. Ah! Help! I'm going down. Oh, it's turned to hard clay. Maybe that magic business is good for something after all. There's no hurry, Mr. Kid. You have the rest of your life! <laughs> it's solid. Are you all right? Yes, but that was a pretty clever trick he pulled. He understands the powers of the crystal better than I had believed. He will be very dangerous. Oh, look! My ship! Oh, I'll murder him! Wait, it is no use. What did he mean we would spend the rest of our lives here? Exactly that, I'm afraid. Unless we can find a way out of this, we've got about 11 hours left. 10 hours and 46 minutes to be exact, sir. Have you contacted them? Not for a while, sir. I'll try again now. Come in, Voyager. Come in. Yes, Professor. Mephisto? Where's Kid and the others? You'd be amazed if you knew my dear professor. <laughs> we'll never find a way out. If there really is one, quiet. I hear footsteps. Foots, quiet. It is Mephisto. We must follow him down that corridor. Corridor? That's a wall. Hurry. It is a corridor. Come on! To the left. Gosh, there's no top. Quickly, run! To there! Jump, Jonathan! Oh. Hey, look where we are! It's like a dreamland. Yes, too much like a dreamland. You're too suspicious, Guru. What could possibly be wrong in a beautiful place like this? What was that? What the? demonstrate his amazing new discovery, the famous physicist, Dr. Busby Birdwell. Me? They want me? Oh, just like I've always dreamed. What is this? Thank you, fellow physicists. It is indeed a great honor to perform my new experiment before you. First, the sulfur precipitate. Now, assistant, the carbolic acid. <gasps> That's Mephisto. And that's not carbolic acid. It's nitroglycerin. He'll blow himself to bits. Now, when I mix these acids... After these messages, we'll be right back. Some things are meant to be together. Like the sweet honey taste and graham cracker crunch of golden grams. So happy together. Good sweet honey and graham cracker crunch of golden grams. So happy together! It's a part of your complete breakfast. Uh huh. Those golden grams. Golden grams. They're fighting to save the earth. Shadow Force has a new airborne threat the Shadow Parasite Attack Fighter, a one man gunship with a weapon system that can blast anything out of the air. Almost anything. Starcom's new F-1400 Star Wolf can knock it down. Star Wolf, high-speed, high-performance fighter that powers open to take on anything Shadow can dish out. Shadow Parasite Fighter and F-1400 Star Wolf don't even need batteries. Figures and vehicles each sold separately. Busby! 
it must be frozen. Whoops. What happened? Where's my experiment? It was an illusion, little one. It is as I feared. This is indeed a dreamland. A land in which your most secret wishes seem to come true, but are really only illusions that will lead to your destruction. Well, that seemed pretty real to me. Too real. Where do we go now? We must continue toward the center. But remember, no matter what you think you see, do not leave the trail. Don't worry, we won't. <laughs> we shall see about that, Miss Lane. I wonder what it is that you secretly want most. What's that? Come on, Erica, they're all waiting. She's getting married. <laughs> married? To whom? To you, of course. Me? Yes. She, too, has fallen under the spell of her secret dreams. We must watch carefully. It's Mephisto! For a second, Jonathan and I were... Were what? Oh, nothing. It was another illusion. Your turn will be next, Mr. Kidd. Be careful. Don't worry about me. I don't want to get married yet. Very funny. Neither do I. Come on, cut it out. We've got work to do. Colonel Kidd. Calling Colonel Kidd. What was that? Kidd here, sir. Prepare to descend, Colonel. Look! Jonathan, stop! Remember, Colonel Kidd, you are the first human being ever to explore this planet. Be careful. Okay, let me down. It will be a pleasure, Mr. Kidd. <laughs> it's Mephisto! Forget stone breaks too, Guru. Get this way. Wow, that's a long way down. Nothing's happened yet, sir. Nothing at all. No more radio contact. Not a word. They might as well be in Never Neverland. Perhaps they are, Professor. Perhaps they are. What's that now? The heart of the magic crystal. My goal. Don't you mean our goal? No. From this point, I must go on alone. It is too dangerous for you. Bash! Just because we can't pull rabbits out of our turbans like some... He's right, Guru. We... I am sorry, my friends. But I alone must face the evil powers of Kabbalah. Back. Now, a raging 
terror grabs hold of the universe. Monstroid. When Monstroid gets wound up, it grabs, it lurches, it spins, and thrashes. Because just like Hordak, it's bad. I get it. I'll stop it. Monstroid. New from the Masters of the Universe. You put it together. Action figures sold separately from Mattel. It's a grabber. Fool, the closer you come to the center, the greater my powers grow. If you dare enter the pass, you shall perish. We shall see whose powers are greater. Oh, this will be almost too easy. Now! He's still there! Oh, but not for long. This time he will not escape. Wait! A shadow! Yes, a shadow. And not even your powers can crush a shadow. But they can open the way for me. You will never huh? use it unless you can swim through boiling water. I cannot swim, but I can walk over frozen water. I call the sun to consume your ice huh? and you. Stop it! The moon shall be my shield! I must cross the pass! No! Nothing can hold back the sun! He's gone! I have reached the heart of evil. I must find some way to destroy it. Now, I call the spirits of the sun, of the winds, of the entire universe of evil! To destroy this intruder forever! Whatever powers I have, may they aid me now! Professor Carter, the crystal ball, it's shattering from the inside. Look out! It's collapsing! What's going on now? Where's Guru? I don't know, but let's get out of here! Come on! Oh my gosh! The sky is splitting! Take her up, Busby! Head for that red area. Guru must be there somewhere. Hurry! What happened, Guru? The crystal is destroyed forever. And so will we be if we don't find a way out of here. Hey, look who's here. It's Mephisto. here, sir. The crystal is finished. We're coming out. Good work. What about Mephisto?
Mephisto. Mephisto the Magnificent? I predict he'll think a long time before he makes any more predictions. Up of Saturday morning cartoon Max Out is coming your way. What a meal! What a meal! A whole bowl of cereal! What a meal! What a meal! A whole bowl of cereal! When someone
Clash, Dale and Zarkov have set out for Mongo on a mission of mercy to prevent the impending collision between Earth and the mysterious comet world. But as their rocket ship enters the atmosphere of the alien planet, there is an unprovoked attack which destroys the guidance system, plummeting them toward unknown dangers below. And now, Chapter One, A Planet in Peril. Hang on, we're going to crash. Strange manner of fish have we here, like nothing I've ever hunted on Mongo. Ah, and you've hunted every living thing, haven't you, Prince Baron? <laughs> Only those who furnish me with sport, like you and your lion men, Thun. We'll settle our differences another time. <laughs> Any time, lion man. And now, who are you? Whence do you come? From Earth. Welcome to Mongo, Earthman. Sorry I couldn't have arranged a better welcome for you. With a pack of hunters armed with your ice arrows, no doubt. I need no arrows to deal with you, Lion Man. Stop it, both of you. You've got bigger troubles right now. What are those things that have us bagged in here? They seem to be mutants, bred to live in the sea. Gilman of Mongo. Ming the Merciless's fisherman. Aye, and he'll be pleased with this day's catch. I don't think I like being referred to as the day's catch. Who or what is Ming the Merciless? The Emperor of the Universe, he calls himself. The absolute ruler of this world, Earthman. Though there are those who stand against him. Like you? If it were not for Ming, Baron would be Emperor of Mongo which would be no improvement at all, if you ask me. No one's asking you, Lion Man. You both hate your ruler, Ming, and yet you fight between yourselves. Every race on Mongo is an enemy to every other race. Each man stands alone on Mongo, as you'll learn, if you survive, Earthman. Gordon Live. It's the rocket cycle. Read of your favorite scene from the hit movie. Scaled to fit most three and three-fourth inch action figures. Blasting off on a desperate mission to save Earth from the evil plottings of the tyrannical space lord Ming the Merciless. Action figures sold separately. Yeah! 
Oh, it seems we are part of the Daily Catch and not prisoners. Hey, Cotface! Easy does it. That other truck, where does it go? To the devil. It leads eventually to Ming's palace. <laughs> if we've got to go, why not go in style? Come on! Hey! Hey! Wait for the others! My chance to escape. Why should I risk spoiling it? A true prince does not run from danger. You owe me satisfaction for that insult, Earth Man. Take your time, Prince Baron. Right now we've got more pressing matters. Doc, how long have we got before we collide with Earth? I'd almost forgotten about that. My previous calculations indicated impact in a little over a week, but now... Now what? I don't know. Whoever directed that energy beam at our rocket ship intended us to land here. Nothing happens on Mongo unless me, the merciless, is behind it. Me wants you free for his own purposes. Count on it. Maybe we can argue the point with him. Perhaps you are willing to submit to Ming's justice, but I'm not. What did you do? Where are we going? He's diverted us onto the Dire Marsh track. It isn't completed. We'll crash! You're on your own, Earth Man. Pray to your gods, whoever they may be, that we never meet again. Save yourself, you mangy cur. What about this shell? Can we follow him? There is no engine or skimmers. Even if there was, we could never find our way. Only an arborean hunter like Baron knows the swamp. Baron ran off with our motor, so we'll need another form of propulsion. Look out! You'll swamp us! On Earth, we say necessity is the mother of invention. What's that? Whatever it is, I don't think it'll make the top 40. Aura. She comes with her hunters. Aura? Princess Aura. Ming's offspring. She and her witch women warriors will hunt us down and bring us to her father in chains. Not if I can help it. In this terrible place, only the hunters can find their way. And Princess Aura is second only to Prince Baron of Arborea in that skill. You mean we're game for them? <laughs> the most dangerous game they'll ever hunt. Come on. This way! Come on! Look at me go! Hold! Your Highness, they've separated. 
They won't get far in Dire Marsh. The strangers and the Lion Man are afoot. But Prince Baron, he has the powered shell. He's gotten away. I swear by the gods of Mongo, I'll settle with Baron yet. Now, after the others. If they get away, you'll pay for it. All of you! There's no other way. None. And nothing can live in Dire Marsh. Do we give up? Chance the mercy of Emperor Ming? He has none. In that case, we've got nothing to lose. the march. We have them now. We've lost them. More likely, they're being quiet, trying to get in closer to us. The talk of a hunter, Earthman. <laughs> Run! It's a carnivore tree! <laughs> Slime pit. The what? The slime pit. Now, Spike, or you're my slave. Not the slime. Yes, my slime will overpower you. I've been slime. No one escapes the evil horde slime pit. Yes. The evil horde slime pit from the masters of the universe. You put it together. Action figures each sold separately from Mattel. There is no escape from Ming the Merciless or his daughter. Your Princess Aura? <sighs> the witch warrior herself. Watch your tongue, Lion Man, or I'll have it stilled for you. <sighs> A fine welcome you give visitors to your world. I'd welcome you in another way, wench. If my Imperial father hadn't reserved that pleasure for himself. It is well to see that even the Queen of Cats fears Ming the Merciless. I warned you, Thun! <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Princess. Your neck is too lovely to wring. Now, tell your warrior women to back off. 
Do as he commands. Look, an Imperial Flyer. There's no chance for you. at an opportune moment. My orders, Princess, are to bring the prisoners to Emperor Ming at once. Very well, Captain Eric. I weary of the hunt. I will return with you. I wish to study these strange visitors to our world. She means you, Flash. A fate better than some I can think of. And please me too. Now there's a designing woman. And her designs are all for you. Jealous, Dale? You're darn right I am. Look! King Falcon's Hawkmen! You sounded like the Hawkmen are your enemies. All men of Mongo are enemies to each other. As I told you, Earthman. No wonder a tyrant like your Emperor Ming rules you. If you can't unite to stand against him. The captured Earth people. We are from Earth, and we came here... I know who you are. Then you must also know that Mongo and Earth are on a collision course. <laughs> Our worlds will not collide, Dr. Zarkov. Mongo's course is controlled by me. But even a near miss would be catastrophic. Earthquakes, tidal waves. Exactly. It will disrupt your world, destroy any resistance, and then my forces will land. Conquest. You came to conquer Earth. We'll stop you. Somehow. <laughs> Brave words. Perhaps your anger can best be used in the arena. As for... Father, the Earthman, Flash Gordon, pleases me. Give him to me. 
<laughs> if he survives, daughter, perhaps he will be yours. As for you, Dr. Zarkov, you will be taken to my laboratories, where your earthly science will become part of my own. As for the girl, she will join my women. Flash Gordon and the Lion Man, let their fighting skills be tested for the tournaments of Mungo. <laughs> Let the tests begin! Watch yourself, Earthman! This training ball carries a sting! Flash! Hurry! We'll come back for your friend, Earthman! You'll try my patience once too often, daughter! Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. The Space Palace, home of the biggest event of the year, the Space Awards. This year, every superhero in the galaxies is there. Space Ghost, the Teen Force, Space Ace, and of course, Astro and the Space Dogs. With security like that, what criminal would dare show his face? Wait a minute. That's the evil arm of the crab. The most devious villain in space. <laughs> With my mechanical crab leg, I'll snatch up those silver space awards at the speed of light. <laughs> And to Space Ace, the outstanding planet patrolman of the year, the space trophy in solid solar silver. Oh, the trophy's been stolen. Well, looks like a job for Space Ace. And don't forget Astro and the space dogs. I wish I could. <laughs> Just as I expected, the sign of the crab. Gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I've got a crab 
to nap. Interplanetary radar has him heading toward the Crab Nebula. You've got to catch him before he gets there, or you won't have enough fuel to return to base. No problem, Chief. It's all in a day's work. Space Ace, don't forget the dogs. Second thought, this may take two days' work. Undeterred by a powerful space storm, Space Ace heroically hurtles forward in the pursuit of the crab. You know something? I don't think we can catch the crab in this storm. Leave the thinking to me, Astro. You just keep bailing water. Aye, aye, Spacey Acey. What's this? A sudden break in the storm? Everything. I think I've got a fix on that creepy crab. Do that to my friend Cosmo, will ya? I got him! I got him! Rookies, you first got the crab. Anybody want three pups? Cheap. As the crab races for the safety of crab galaxies, Space Ace closes in on his tail. Forget the chase, Ace! You can't win! <laughs> with my Space Ace crab net, we'll see who gets the last laugh. If the crab makes away with that silver trophy from under our noses, Ace, it will be a mockery of justice. Don't worry, Chief. I've got Astro mounting my Space Ace exhaust tracker right now. In no time at all, we'll have a radiant trail of exhaust leading us straight to the crab. Okay, Space Ace. It's ready to go. Sure does work great, guys. Look how clearly <coughs> we can see <coughs> crab's exhaust. <coughs> Undeterred by the devious devices of the devilish crab, Space Ace fights his way through the terrible meteor storm. Watch out for bumps on the road! He obviously didn't know I'm the Major League Spaceball hitting champ for seven years running. I guess he never had time to work much on his fielding. Ouch! There's the crab planet now. <laughs> Home free at last. We're almost close enough to laser lance him, Astro. Calling Space Ace, turn back. You are dangerously low on fuel. I repeat, turn back immediately. I didn't hear anything. Did you? Mm -mm. And by the way, Space Ace, make sure that Astro gets some flight time. I heard that! I know, I know. Okay, team, this is it. Laser Lance, ready! Gyro Jail Jettisons, ready! Gravity Cannon, ready! This is it, guys. We're going in for him. The autopilot on this ship is so efficient, even Astro can't throw it off course. Overcoming one adversity after another, Space Ace eventually lands on the Crab Planet. Another superhero bites the dust. What's this? A bite already? More like a pinch. You're under arrest, Crab. Ha! Huh. You arresting me, Space Ace? It looks like you're the one in trouble. Don't bank on it, buddy. <laughs> Good work with the Ace Claw, Space Dogs. There's more than one way to pinch a crab. And as the crab has caught it away to planetary prison, once again the canine rookies have proved their worth. One small step for Space Ace, one big doggy biscuit for the Space Dog. Clumsy!
inside this pyramid in over 5,000 years. Hello, what's this? Odd, it feels unlike anything I've ever touched. Within this tomb shall sleep the evil god of darkness, Anubis. May the light of day never again touch his eyes. Oof, another silly Egyptian curse. It's all poppycock, nonsense. We shouldn't scoff at the old curses. Collins, what are you doing? I just want to get a better look at this Anubis. Just plain flopped. Hey, Herc, this pyramid power of yours isn't doing a thing for me. That's because you're talking when you should be concentrating. Okay, so how long do I have to concentrate before I feel anything? Shh. Herc? Shh. I think he's concentrating. <laughs> Did you say that pyramid power would give you an alert mind? <laughs> or a hurt mind? Right now, Turkey, I've got a mind to Sentinel, Sentinel alert. alert. Sentinel, Sentinel alert. alert. Report, Sentinel-1. Sensors, Sensors monitoring odd new power source. More potent than any previously known. Is it dangerous? Possibly. Possibly not. Its wave pattern is highly unusual. Unlike any energy form. Talk about pyramid power. 
Where is this energy located, S1? North African region. Specifically in Egypt. Then that's where we're headed. Let's go, guys. Stand by to launch. Ready, S1. I think I mm, overdid it. Don't quit now, Merc. We have to find that UFO. Wait a sec. Whoever or whatever we're looking for is obviously very powerful. I suggest we do this carefully. I've got an idea. Now I know we're in trouble. They call camels a uh, mm, ships of the desert. I'm getting seasick. It was your idea, Merc. Besides, think of poor Austria. She's the camel. And one of you wise guys has a lumpy wallet. Hold it. I'm picking up a concentrated energy source dead ahead. Energy from a pyramid? Mm, that's weird. No weirder than anything else we've run into tonight. The readings go right off the scale. If there was ever an entrance to this pyramid, it's sure sealed tight now. A termite couldn't get inside of this thing. How about a mole? Now what do we do? Try to look casual. Gotcha. Uh, hum. On second thought, forget it. Careful, kiddo. No problem. So far. Someone is inside the pyramid, even though I sealed it shut. 
They must possess extraordinary powers. I must use caution. the energy source and it's like nothing I've ever seen it appears to be completely automatic approach with caution it is safe to do so return device here for analysis You were only a legend. I am, my dear. A living legend. Now give me that. I see you humans are still as foolish as ever. What are you going to do? What's taking Astria so long? I don't know, but I don't like it. Astria. Astria, do you copy? Come in, Astria. So, it's Astria, is it? Well, Astria. Neither you nor your friends can stop me from my mission. To destroy your world. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Is a real ninja, evil master of martial arts. Will Clap Champ get a hold of him? I have the power. Figure sold separately. You from the masters of the universe, ninja and Clap Champ. Evil skill against steel grip. Imagine Eternia. Eternia. Imagine the gate of fangs. Eternia. Batteries not included. Imagine the soaring sky tracks. Figure soul separately. The cavern of justice. Eternia. Imagine the power lift to the control chamber. At last, from the masters of the universe, the world you've always imagined can be yours. S1. We're worried about Astria. She's not responding to our calls. Astria! Can you get inside the pyramid? We can sure try. Maintenance operator. Yes, yes sir. sir. Commence preparations for link up with alien power source. Roger, S1. Now, the only problem is, how do we get inside this stone turkey? No problem, Merc. We'll make our own entrance. Come on, Herc. At this rate, it'll take us longer to get inside the pyramid than it took to build it. You have a better idea. As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah! my prisoners. I wish you wouldn't use that term now. Another cup of beach, S1. There! 
link up with our pyramid established. Now you shall all be entombed as I was in a prison of stone. Who, who are you? I am Sentinel One, guardian of the young Sentinels. Where are they? They're taken care of. There must be a way out of here. Kirk, I think the wide open spaces are right on the other side of this wall. Say no more, sister. Open sesame. Sentinel One, the power source is still in Anubis's hands. I am presently in contact with Anubis. You may listen. As you can see, Anubis, your three prisoners are free. Request explanation for your actions. You are impressive, Sentinel One, though no match for me. And so I shall tell you all a story which begins long ago. On my own planet, I was a scientist experimenting with a new power source, my power pyramid. But it was unstable, and its energy output caused a chain reaction within my planet's core. I barely managed to escape in my spacecraft. Sick with grief, I had accidentally destroyed my entire world. It was during my long journey through space that I perfected my power pyramid. What wonders it might have accomplished on my world, if my world yet existed. But it did not. Thus, I sought out another planet, your Earth of 5,000 years ago, where I might help its primitive peoples with the power pyramid, and perhaps, in a small way, atone for what I had done to my own world. My appearance and my power frightened everyone. They attacked me with a strange gas. Before I could react, I slept the sleep of suspended animation while your people built a structure of stone over my spacecraft, sealing me in for 5,000 of your years. But now I have returned teach you thankless people a lesson, and I shall start by eliminating you, Sentinel One. While I was telling you my story, I got a precise fix on your location. What's going on in there? Sentinel alert. Anubis has broken off contact. High speed energy masks now approach each island. We have to reach headquarters before that UFO does. At the speed that thing's traveling, we'll never beat it. Speak for yourself. Maintenance, Maintenance operator, seal the, the cone, cone doors. Roger! You're just in time, Murr. The cone doors are malfunctioning. Anubis' UFO is doing it. Doors jammed. Quick, S1! Can't that big brain of yours figure something out? I am computing. Compute all you like, Sentinel-1. But within the minute, you will be reduced to scrap metal. <laughs> today's world for what happened 5,000 years ago. Why, the people are the same, ignorant and intolerant. How do you know? 
You haven't even given us a chance. We may be able to help you. Help me? How? It may be possible to return you to your own world in a time before it was destroyed, but only with your cooperation. So, call off your attack. That, that is impossible. Why? Because of your foolish pride? No, because I cannot. Whatever is set in motion by the Power Pyramid must complete its mission unless stopped by some external force. I think that means us, Herc. Yeah, but how do we get rid of something that's solid energy? With more energy. Can you throw that pyramid toward those storm clouds? I think so. Okay, but be careful. Without a paddle. Incredible. You are the first ever to stop the forces of the Power Pyramid. The Power Pyramid is indeed potent. As an energy force, it can exceed the speed of light. And that is why, guided by my computations, it will be able to return you backwards through time. So that I can prevent the destruction of my own world. 5,000 years ago. Precisely. Sentinel-1, it would be my fondest wish come true. But before I leave, there is one final thing I must do. Proceed, Sentinel-1. Farewell, Anubis. There are sentinels. Good heavens, what's going on in there? Wow! Anubis's way of saying thank you. Now that's what I call Pyramid power. Yeah. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had it with pyramids for a while. <laughs> Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. that over there? Ooh, it looks like a picnic. I love picnics. You know, my mother used to take me on picnics. I think I better get over there before the other ants in the neighborhood get the idea and take all the goodies. <laughs> hey, now, that's good food. They don't fool around when they go on a picnic. These are good people. Hey, Ant. Ah, uh, what's the matter? You lost, pal? I want to talk to you for a minute. As a matter of fact, I want to talk to you about your future. 
You know, you're talking to the wrong guy. I'm semi-retired. <laughs> you know, it takes 200,000 ants just to make a decent sandwich, and I'm having trouble with just one, and the day's half over. Hey, you know, speaking of the day half over, I gotta get this pie back to my little pad before it spoils. Okay, you ask for it. You try to talk nice to a guy, and he turns his back on you. So here goes. Coconut cream pie. You know how I know it's coconut? Because it's got a coconut in it, and it hurts. All right, Aunt, you better say uncle. You kind of overshot the landing strip there, buddy. Okay, Ed, I'm going to huff and puff in reverse and inhale you out of house and home. Oh, man, there goes my heifer white furniture and my pretty little Persian rug and all my Tabasco sauce. With all the ants in the world, I gotta pick a kook. <laughs> it's just work, work, work all the time. I mean, it just ain't easy lugging a picnic home. I sure wish they deliver. <laughs> this time, instead of going to him, I'll force him to come to me, or vice versa, whichever works best, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is a sight you won't see often. A grown aardvark making an anthill out of himself. Boy, I tell you, it's a good thing us puny ants are strong, cause otherwise, we just have to eat little things. Work, work, work. Sometimes I think a picnic is more trouble than it's worth. You ever have the mumps? Well, I got the kind with seeds in it. And it's rough on the sinuses, believe me. You gotta take it easy with bananas, cause one little bump and boy, you, you got yourself a bruised banana. It's no use, Ant. You won't give me the slip. How do you like that? He gave me the slip. And I just told him not to. Today we storm Hill 90. Well, if he's gonna come in, I'm gonna get out. There ain't room in this Ant Hill for both of us. Even in the dark, I can find my way around these tunnels. What's this? I'll light a match and have a look. Look, how'd I know he'd have central heating? Hey, Ant, just to notify you, the odd box strikes again, even again, and again if necessary. No wonder he gets around so fast. He's got his own subway. Let's have a little light. On second thought, I like the dog better. I know what I'll do. I'll smoke him out. It's the cheapest cigar I could find. What's the matter, pal? Didn't you read the warning on the package? <laughs> hey, can I do something for you, pal? Oh, yeesh. Make a wish for me. Wish I was dead. You know, I'm thinking of starting an anti-ant protest movement. It's time somebody put their foot down. Hey there, buddy. Be careful. You know the moral of this story? It's people who live near landmines should tread lightly. And I do mean lightly.
My name is Adam of Grayskull. When good is threatened by the power of Eternia, I have the power! I was summoned to the future by the last of mankind to defend them in their hour of need. My old enemy, Skeletor, followed me. Now, here in the future, he has found new allies to help him in his never-ending fight against all that is good. Yet on Primus, I too have found new brave friends and a new family. Thus, with the power of the good and the way of the magic, we struggle against the forces of darkness. Good against evil. The battle continues. The great minds of Primus can no longer stop the mutants from breaking through Primus's protective shield. Therefore, He-Man, hero of Castle Grayskull, has been transported to the future to save the universe and the future of mankind. But Skeletor, his forever enemy, follows our hero to the future. He-Man arrives just in time to defeat Skeletor in a whirlwind battle and pledges to the people of Primus that he will be their protector and defend them against any that try to take their freedom. However, the battle has just begun because Skeletor has found new cohorts, Flog and his band of mutants. I've been waiting for holes in the shield. We can invade Primus. Flog, ruler of Primus. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Flog, king of Primus. No, wait, wait. I've got it. Flog, king of the Trisolar system. There's a nice ring to it, eh? Not bad. And all I ask is that you let me have He-Man. Hey, you have to get rid of him anyway, and I know how to do the job. All right, all right, I suppose you're right. This She-Man is going to cause problems until we've got him out of our way. So what's our next move, Flog? <clears throat> Getting these things out of my face. Our first move, my green friend, is to lure He-Man from Primus and into my little trap. And that means sending you down to Primus to take some pictures for us. Can you do that? I knew you could. Are we taking orders from him or you? Flob, king of the Trisolar Galaxy? We'll try it Skeletor's way. Could there be a wiser mutant in the universe? I think not. Here's the tube that will take us down to Honor. I'm certain the Inner Council will be more interested in meeting He-Man than my nephew. By the power of Eternia? It's going to take some time for me to get used to that. is perfectly right. There's no sense arguing. You're all brilliant. You all have Primus's best interest at heart. It's Zebrian who wastes your time on nonsense like time travel. Am I allowed to defend myself? Now comes the genius who had you waste your energies on a time machine instead of building new weapons for our defense. But I have brought you a great defender. His name is He-Man. This is what you sent Hydran and Flipshot to the past for? A single man to defend our planet? <laughs> Madness! This is no ordinary man. Mutant ship spotted entering Primus' atmosphere. Headed for the Oasis. The Oasis? 
Drissy and Kaz are up there. Drissy? Slushy, hero of the Quagme Swamp, taking pictures. What a waste of talent. Pictures of Titus, Leviton, the Guardian Sea, and now this bracky metal. You'd think I was doing a photo layout from Mutant Magazine. Drissy, do you think it's true there are holes in the shield? Oh, those are rumors, Kaz. The scientists, Master Sebrian, and the Inner Council have always protected us. Then how did the mutants get in? If one of them got through again, I'd love to get my hands on him. hi -ya! Ya! Ya! I wish you'd spend as much energy tending our animals. What is it, little one? What's wrong? Kaz, quickly, to the tube! What is it, Drissy? Run! Don't ask questions! What's this? There's something about someone running to hide that just brings out the evil inside. I'm only supposed to take pictures, but instead... Here comes a present from old Slashhead. My brother and I are grateful. Kaz, this is He-Man, a new friend and protector of Primus. Sure doing a great job so far. Tell me how this happened, Slushhead. It's simple. All that water in there affected his brain. I don't like the way you handle my men. I can always leave, if you wish. Perhaps the people of Primus would give me a warmer welcome. Oh, wait. I didn't say you should go. Of course. A simple misunderstanding. And now, your highness-to-be, can we look at those pictures of Primus that Slushhead took? I don't get why we need these dumb pictures. It's all part of my plan, Slushhead. First, we lure He-Man away from Primus. Then we send you, Hoov, and... Too much brain strain, eh, Slushhead? All right, let's get started. Titus is the site of Primus's Trifusian generator. Without it, the temperature of their planet would become unbearable. And the best part is, the only place they can get crystals to run the generator is on our planet, in Gorn City. Here it comes. Special delivery from Slushhead. Defense. No resistance. Mission accomplished. We're heading back. I know you're down there somewhere, She-Man. Come get the crystals. Come to Gorn City. Come to me. Come to me, He-Man. You are mine. <laughs>
ships invaded through the crack in our shield. They attacked the Trifusium generator and destroyed the crystals that run it. Without those crystals, the temperature on Primus will rise and destroy us. But Gorn City is the only place the crystals are mined. We just can't stroll in and ask them for crystals. There is no other solution. Unless we get more crystals, Primus will burn up. It, it would mean raising the starship from honor. Of course, a baller jet would never make the journey to Denebria. The ship has every weapon system you can imagine. Incredible power. A ship? A weapon like this? Why hasn't it been used? The shield protected us so well for so long that weapons like this were outlawed. Now it's up to us to protect our people. Freeing this starship is a start. This is the moment we've waited all our lives for, Flipshot. The starship is gonna fly. We're gonna get our wings at last! Look, Drissy, it's the starship. Easy, little ones. I'm gonna go see it! Kaz! Right on time. Are you all ready for the mission? I was born ready, Mara. Master Severian asked me to give you this. They're Romdial gems. The traders in Gorn City will accept them in exchange for the crystals. Good luck, He-Man. He-Man, you're going on a mission, aren't you? Can I go along? I can whip those mutants. <laughs> I'm sure you could, Kaz. I'm afraid your sister would whip us if we let you come along. I certainly would. Fighting mutants, it's not a boy's job. Aw, Drissy. And don't aw Drissy me. Now back to the flock. I wish you safe journey, He-Man. Ready, Flipshot? Ready, Hydra. This is the best day of our lives.
Liz, what are you doing here? I... I just wanted to help fight the mutants. Kaz, sneaking on the ship isn't the way to help out. Bad enough we gotta go to Denebria. Now there's a kid along, too. I don't like it. Not a mutant ship the whole way. Something's not right. Let's go! You're not going anywhere. I'll be back soon with the crystals. So, we're gonna stay back here with the ship then? Yes, that way I can call you if there's trouble. Let's go, Gleep. Want me to carry that for a while? Kaz, what are you doing here? Bring on the mutants! The first rule of a good soldier is to obey orders. I told you to stay back at the ship. Well, I didn't mean to... Maybe you didn't, but you've got to learn to think before you act. All right, stick close when we get to Gorn City. <laughs> A trading post. Maybe someone in there has trifusium crystals for trade. Wait for me out here. See that he stays out of trouble, Gleep. <laughs> I hear I can trade for trifusium crystals in this place. Anything can be had here for the right price. And would this be the right price? Meliak, a trader with Romdeal gems. Romdeal gems, you say? Yes, I need trifusium crystals. I don't have any here. Meet me at Shaft 13 in Goldenworks Mine in Half a Crow, just outside of town. Shaft 13. I'll be there. This miner, he was supposed to be here by now. But I am here, He-Man. How did you know my name? A friend of yours told me. I want no gems. Skeletor will pay me a thousand times their worth. Skeletor? As I thought. Primus needs those crystals! Wait! Let the boy go. Who cares about the boy? Meliab lost his son to a cave-in. Send the boy away, He-Man. I do not fight with children. Kaz, go with Gleep. And don't argue. Uh. Go on, boy. Your life is spared. Uh. 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 Stands the drill. The medal of good and right. Take him. Take him now. Just you and me, Meliak. Uh, not quite, He-Man. I was wondering when you'd show up, Skeletor. As for you, you have failed. Now, isn't that nice? He-Man, you're so sweet to help your enemies. Too bad you have no sword. Meliak, the sword. No. Hm. 
just can't find good help nowadays. Some days, nothing goes right. That should be more than enough crystals to run the generator. You saved the planet, He-Man. And, well, Flipshot and I were talking. We've decided we'd like to name the starship in honor of your homeland. Starship Eternia? Yes, I like that. Thank you both. All right, Kaz. Come on and take the controls. I've had a long day. D do you mean it, Captain Hydra? <laughs> sure. You can't do any worse than Flipshot. <laughs> <laughs> I know this place like the back of my tentacle. Things change. The level of the water might be lower than it was before. You should check before you dive in. It's my swamp. I'm going in. That's why I'm the boss. Listen to me next time and check the depth of the water before you dive in. You're right, I will. Reverso will rule, and stop me, nobody can. <laughs> so, to the pavilion planetary must go I. Reverso is definitely not on the guest list for the annual Spaceman's Ball. But what evil plan is brewing in that diabolical brain? How about a quick shake around the shuttle, Jan? Well, I love to um... race. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Astro, wait a minute. I was. Well, that's a new one. Losing out to a police dog. Yeah, yeah, you see. You're really light on your feet. I wish he was light on my feet. Hey, how come the music's going backwards? It's more than the music, Astro. Look at my ace watch. Ace. Greedy. Reverso, I am called, and in my hands is the master defense computer. Twenty-four hours you have to make me ruler of the universe, or the full sting of my powers you will feel. A nice day, have. Does that answer your question, Astro? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure does, AC. So what do we do now, Space? We go after that turkey. Blast off, Astro! I'm gonna punch out Reverso's lights. I'm gonna give him a fat upside down lip. I'm gonna... Easy, Dipper. First, we gotta catch him. Hey, Ace, don't worry. You got us on your side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aren't I the lucky one? You 
have to get that master computer back, Space Ace. The fate of the universe is in your hands. No problem, Chief. I can handle... Uh, I mean, we can handle Reverso. Setting course for Reverse World now, Chief. Stand by, going into light speed. Coming up on Reverse World now, AC. Yeah, yeah. Okay, put on the asteroid disguise, Astro. Put on the asteroid disguise, Dipper. Put on the asteroid disguise, Kaz. Put on the Astro disguise, Astro. You got it. What happened to the viewport? I can hardly see where I'm going. Uh, I forgot to tell you, AC. I forgot to clean them. What is this place, AC? We must be in Reverso's palace. And there's the master defense computer. Reverso's palace? He's not gonna like us being here. Yeah? Well, how the hey do we move that big thing? We'll miniaturize it. Can't do that, AC. Why not? I forgot the miniaturizer. Where? Oh, where did I go wrong? Don't worry, AC. We can carry it out of here. Mm. Hey, AC, help! Astro! <laughs> Push every button until it stops. You all right, Astro? A little weird, I feel, AC. Hey, I'm not AC. He's been reversorized. Told you I did to stay away from reverse world, a space. Now the price you will pay. Reversorized you all will be. <laughs> what do we do, space? I'm gonna get that turkey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too, that goes for it. You upside down Peggy, I'm not afraid of you. I just had a brainstorm, Cosmo. Now listen real carefully. I... What's the matter? Can't you fight? Bored, I'm starting to get. Oh! Take it up, Cosmo. Oh, no, which one do I push? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Maybe it's this one. I deserve better. I really do. Oh, that's it. The ruler I will be. You can't push me around. Cosmo, push the smoke screen button. That's easy for him to say. Yeah! The fog button, Cosmo. Now I'm gonna get that turkey. For me, wait. Yeah, yeah. Push the stop button, Cosmo. Push! I'll catch you, Cosmo! Oh. Oof. Oof. Oh. Now that's what I call teamwork. And so the universe is spared the iron-fisted rule of Reverso, thanks to the gallant efforts of Space Ace and the Space Dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Truly my best pal you are, Ace. I told you a million times, Astro. He's Space Ace, I'm Khan. Sometimes you get lucky. Seven centuries have passed since the Earth plunged into darkness. Seven centuries since the Jetiter swore to regain for man his lost knowledge and freedom. All the immortals took the oath, all except one who dominates the world. But soon an immortal will come to confront him. His name is Quentin McLeod. He is the Highlander.
these searchlights do? It's the slaves, Lord Cortez. There aren't enough of them! Then Arak must find more, wherever he can. Send him to the Highlands. <laughs> Eternal power to Cortan! The Highlands, man. The Highlands? But, Major, that's where the Dundees... Silence! Cortan's orders. Eternal power to Cortan. Eternal power to Cortan. Make me a watermill, Quentin, will you? A watermill? Out of what? There's no wood around here. Oh, yes, there is. There's a crab apple tree up there. Where? See, but maybe you're too scared to climb that high. Me scared? You must be joking. I've climbed tougher peaks than this, little sister. <laughs> Come back, Quentin. It's too high. Aren't you ever scared? Never. Not even of the hunters or Horton? Why should I be? I'm very strong, little sister. You're just lucky. I bet you don't even have nightmares like I do. I do, sometimes. One scary dream. Always the same. And it happened for real before I started dreaming about it. What do you mean? Tell me about it. I was seven years old when it happened. Right here in the Highlands. You and Gold were babies. You'd just been born. Come on, Gold! Do you know your name, child? Let's try it again. Do you know your name, child? Hmm. You do have a name, don't you? Well, it's about time. So tell it to me, will you? Quentin. Quentin of the Highlands, sir. Quentin of the Highlands? Is that all? <laughs> um, the Dundee clan, sir. So be it. Quentin the Dundee. I'll be back. If not for you, then for another. I've got time. But that's not a scary dream at all. To me it is. That man may come back for me. Hide in the cave behind the falls and stay there, whatever happens. Mother, mother! Ah! Hurry, mother, we have to get to the mountains. No, Quentin. You must not run away. But, mother, they're coming. You must face them, Quentin McLeod. McLeod? Why are you calling me that? Because that's your true name. The time has come, my son. Obey your mother, boy. Come here and fight. If you dare, get rid of that woman. I'll take care of this brave champion here. Ah! No! Ah! Let go of her! Murderer! Starting to learn, child, but you're beginning to bore me. The lesson's finished, child. Why did she call me McLeod? No! At last! Seven hundred years waiting for this moment. 
quite a long time, I have to say. So listen carefully. Mother! Hush! You are the chosen Highlander. The immortal awaited for seven centuries. Although I loved you like my own. You are no Dundee. You are the last of the MacLeods. The stranger will come back for you. You must follow him, Quentin. So go now and face your destiny. But first, save the Dundees from Cortan. And please remember to take care of your little sister. Quentin, where's Mommy? I'll explain it to you, Clyde. Do you know your name, child? I am Quentin McCloud, and I am not a child. And what are you planning to do with that, McCloud? Free the Dundees. Get out of my way. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, if your intentions are to fight, then fight like a Highlander. Highlander. Did you call me, my lord? What? Oh, it's you, my lord. Prepare my armor. Your armor? But I would... Silence! Do your duty. As you wish, Lord Cortan. And why should my brother follow you anyway? Especially since you're on the wrong end of the sword, stranger. Stranger? Me, please. I am Don Vincente Marino Ramirez, Grandee of Spain. And since you seem to be impatient to take your first lesson, let's start! Hey! Open the door. Marshmallow Krispies, orange, lemon, raspberry, grape, it's snap, crackle, and poppin' with lots of fruit taste. Kellogg's Fruity Marshmallow Krispies, part of this complete breakfast. Mmm, how fruity! Fruity Marshmallow Krispies, you'll be snap, crackle, poppin' over lots of fruit taste. I'm supposed to make a Highlander out of you. Ow! And that child is what I'll do. I am not a child. I am Quentin McCloud. Oh, good. That's better. See, it is precisely because you are Quentin McCloud that you are the one who must confront Cortan. Confront Cortan? Me? In all the time I've served you, this is the first occasion I've had the honor of arming you, my lord. They say it's been centuries since anyone has seen you in armor, my lord. I pity the men who dare to confront you, my lord. They're not men, you fool. They're jettators. Jettators? I'm supposed to meet jettators? Ouch! Stop it, stranger! Jettators? They are immortals who have forsworn the sword to help men overthrow Cortan's tyranny. 
Seven centuries ago, after the great catastrophe, all immortals assembled together on the Hill of Oaths. By surrendering arms, we all became jettors. All but one. I refuse to take this absurd vow. And since no one will do battle with me, I declare myself the last immortal and claim the prize. Supreme knowledge and absolute power. You have no right, Cortan. You are not the last. <laughs> Poor Jettators, trapped by their own oath. So I believed until today. Ten years, perhaps ten centuries from now, another immortal will come to challenge you. An immortal who will not be bound by the oath we have just sworn ourselves to. And on that day, Cortan, you will know your end has come. No! And you're the chosen, Quentin MacLeod. Your destiny is to confront Cortan. And for that, you must be prepared. Come. No time to lose. Come along, Clyde. One moment. She's not coming with us. I'm not going anywhere without her. And I've got something else to tell you, Don Ramirez, whatever your name is. I swore to my mother to free the Dundees. I intend to keep my word. Have you lost your mind? They're in Magonda. Then I'll go there and get them. Why not challenge Cortan to a duel while you're at it? What if he did? He's an immortal, isn't he? And what good is that if he can't help out the people he loves? And what about Cortan? What's your brother going to do about him? It's no problem for me. I'll just keep out of his way. Three thousand years, Ramirez. For three thousand years, you've managed to avoid... Children, come on. This way to Magonda. slums of Mogonda. This is where we'll find Mangus the Jetter. Seven hundred years ago, Cortan stole his blueprints and used them to build Mogonda. Oh. and what's wrong? I... I feel something. Strange. I feel that too, MacLeod. It's the presence of another immortal. You'll get used to it. It might be Mangus. Or Cortan. Mangus! Is this the Highlander? Have you gone mad, Ramirez? Why have you brought him to fight so soon? Wait seven centuries, then lose him in a flash? Madness! He's not ready. He's a mere child. We're not here to fight Cortan, Mangus. We've come for the Dundees. The hunters captured them this morning. This morning, you say? The means are not in the energy complex yet. You mean we can get them out? No, young man. All Igor means is that they're still in the sorting station. Can you take us there, Mangus? Has your brain gone soft with the years, Ramirez? I cannot enter the city unless to fight Cortan. I can show you the way through the sewers. After these messages, we'll be right back. Imagine Eternia. Eternia. Imagine the gate of fangs. Eternia. Batteries not included. Imagine the soaring sky tracks. Figure so separately. The cavern of justice. Eternia. Imagine the power lift to the control chamber. At last, of the masters of the universe, the world you've always imagined can be yours. <laughs> I have a question. I know. This is fruit wheat cereal. I know. There's fruit in every bite. I know. So how did I get the fruit inside the wheat? I don't know. Real strawberry, apple, or raisin in every bite. New fruit wheat cereal. Part of this nutritious breakfast. There's fruit hidden in every bite. And I'm going to find out how they do it. Let's go. Excellent. I will defeat. 
defeat him before he has received the knowledge. <laughs> Quite right, my dearest lord. Much easier this way. One word, my lord. You're scared, Cortez. <laughs> Stop this grinder. But every four seconds, when the blades are opposite to each other, if you move fast enough, you can make it to the other side without getting your head chopped off. But the goal will never make it through. Nor will you, Clyde. You're staying here. What? But I. No arguments. That's it. You'll wait here with Mango. Now! Go, Ramirez! Ha! Be careful, McLeod! An accident would be fatal, even for us! Go! Well done, McLeod! Brandon! Don't worry, little sister. I'll be back. Hey! station is over there. That's where your friends are being kept. We have to make it fast. The hunters! Alert! Alert! Nice throw, McLeod! Huh, it was nothing. Eternal power to Cortan. Watch these men carefully. They're dangerous. Don't get any ideas, Dundee. What's so funny? Who do you think it? <laughs> Who are you? A miracle. <laughs> Over there! Open the grill! Quentin! You're alive! Follow Igor. He'll lead you outside. Stay where you are. Let's see what you've learned, Highlander. Ah. Ah. Ow! Clyde. Well, could say thank you. Let's get out of here before more hunters turn up. So, is this the terrible McLeod? <laughs> Do not move, child. I am not a child. Of course not. You're the Highlander. So come and fight like one. No, not now. Do you remember this, Cortan? It almost cut off your head 20 centuries ago. Your oath, Ramirez. Leave us, McLeod, and come back to avenge me when you're ready. If one of us must die, it's me. Vangus, stay out of this, you old fool. <laughs> Get out of here, Ramirez! I can't hold him up for long! No! There's no choice. We must obey! But he hasn't got a chance. Mangus knows what he's doing. What will become of him? He'll pass away, and his knowledge about the architecture and the secret passageways of Magona will go to Cortan. <laughs> you did it, Quentin! They're free! <laughs>
Thanks to you. But I could have learned so much from Mangus. He taught you his most important lesson, McLeod. One simple truth. If you believe in something, believe in it to the very end. On our way, Highlander. Your adventure is just beginning. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. I'm an anteater, and wherever there's a picnic, sooner or later an ant is going to show up. I'll just stick around. Aha! Something small approaches. Hold it! Hey, what's this? I don't believe it. They got motorcycles for ants. Well, you know how it is. With transistors, they can miniaturize anything these days. Well, it won't do you any good, Ant, because I'm having you for lunch. That's what you think, pal. So it shouldn't be a total loss. I'll get him on the return trip. Man, I never saw so much delicious food. Boy, this French bread show makes a great peanut butter sandwich. Uh-huh. Here he comes. You know, peanut butter really sticks to the roof of your back. This time I'll give him a good snack. Then I'll have a snack. Wasting your time, pal. Wasting my time, am I? Well, we'll just see about that. I can't fail this time. He's got to come this way. Anybody know a good tailor? I think I need a new tail. Why go to a lot of work to catch an ant when I can use instant hold? The latest scientific discovery. Fooling with science. It doesn't work. I'll have to run him down. I 
was wrong. Instant hold does work. It works rotten. Just goes to show you what you can get these days on a credit card. All right, wise guy, you met your match. You press down on the starter and... That sales didn't explain to me about reverse. He ought to be along any minute. Aha, right on schedule. You instant hole. By golly, I believe he wants to drag. Okay, buddy, let's go. Started out to be a picnic. It is the 31st century. Ulysses killed the giant Cyclops when he rescued the children and his son Telemachus. But the ancient gods of Olympus are angry and threaten a terrible revenge. Mortals, you defy the gods. I sentence you to travel among unknown stars. Until you find the kingdom of Hades, your bodies will stay as lifeless as stone. Ulysses, the way back to Earth has been wiped from my memory. Father! Oh, Father! You are alive, my son.
What a shame that you have to leave our splendid base here at Troy, Ulysses. I know that the situation is bad on Earth. Impatient princes threaten the peace. Yes, Priam. You know the conditions, but if I don't return before the next comet streaks across the sky, my wife Penelope must choose another husband for herself. I know, Penelope. She'll devise ways for waiting. Before you leave, let's give Telemachus his party. What is this? What's going on? Yes. Happy birthday, my son. All our friends here in Troy want to celebrate with you. <laughs> <laughs> what a super cake! Thanks, Father! I promised you a surprise for your birthday, remember? All right, go on, blow out your candles. Oh, <gasps> I'm the surprise! Hello, Telemachus! Telemachus, let me introduce Nono, your own robot. <gasps> a robot for me? That's right, a robot all your own! Maybe you'd like to munch on a small bowl. Oh, wow! He's super! Thanks, Father, thanks! We are all delighted that you are pleased. Be careful, my friends. Be careful. Don't worry, Priam. All the same, be careful. You can rest easy. With Nestor and Euryclay, we couldn't be better protected. All will be well. Remember, Ulysses, you are always welcome here. I will never forget that, Priam. Bye. Goodbye, Telemachus. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye! Well, are you ready? Shirka, Euryclay is going to give you the coordinates of our space trajectory. Very well, Ulysses. Shirka, trajectory 1025, the direct route, photonic energy drive at maximum. Objective Earth. Trajectory 1025, iris opening programmed. Maximum acceleration attained. We are leaving the orbit of Troy. Attention, Ulysses, I suggest visual display on central screen. Why? What is it? Is something wrong? I detect an uncharted planet across our trajectory 1025. That's strange. There aren't supposed to be any planets in this zone. I have run a total scan. This planet is not entered in any of my memory banks. Well then? Shirka, have you checked our space heading? We are on 1025. I have already verified our position. Very strange. The Odyssey will maintain its original trajectory. Enter this planet into file diary and store data in main memory bank. Data recording programmed. The mass of vapor. It seems headed right for us. Affirmative. Vapor will collide with the ship in 30 seconds. Activate protection screen, Shirka. Protection screen programmed. Fantastic light! It's coming at us! Right through the screen! <laughs> the bright vapor has just left on a trajectory vertical to the ship's main garden. Give me the emergency channel. Class A alert. Stand by. Seems to have taken something with it. Shirka, a close-up! Telemachus! No! No! My son!
Another child? Look, Yumi, a human from the planet Earth. How handsome he is. His color is returning. He seems to be waking up. Please, don't be afraid. My name is Yumi, and this is my brother, Numenor. We're from Zatra. Some call it the White Planet. Ah, oh, Zatra! What's your name? Where are you from? From planet Earth. My name's Telemachus. So he does come from Earth. But that's far from here. You must be like us, prisoners of the disciple of the Cyclops. Prisoners of the Cyclops? The creature they worship here. It gives them light. Come and see. There's their idol, the Cyclops. It steals children and takes away their energy and gives it back to its disciples they need. But why? To give them life. That's why we were stolen. Very soon, I'm afraid it'll be our turn. But why such a sacrifice? Why children? I don't like it. Without the Cyclops, they'd all be blind. Ah! It must be an alert. They're all being called somewhere. Look, it's our spaceship, the Odyssey. Surely my father's in there. If only there was a way that I could let him know that I'm here. There is. How, Yumi? Call out for help. If your voice isn't strong enough, then your brain has enough power to reach him. Go on, close your eyes, you will understand. Think hard of the place you left. Think of your spaceship. Think of your father. Come. Telemachus. I can hear his voice. What is it? Telemachus. It is his voice. He's calling me. He is a prisoner in the temple of, of the disciples of Cyclops. They're all blind by the great galaxy. He's going to be sacrificed. Stand by. I have to get there. After these messages, we'll be right back. No fish, he eats. But that's lots of fruit, island cereal. Oh, yumma, yumma! Hey, fish! <laughs> hey, big fish! <laughs> fruit Island's brand cereal is part of this complete breakfast. Puny fish! Where is Fruit Islands? <laughs> you can help the king and he get home in the fine Fruit Island sweepstakes. Use the game pen and map in specially marked boxes. Millions will enter, thousands will win. Watches, stereos, TVs, and more. One will win a treasure of toys. A yumma, yumma! For free game pieces, write box 8501, Westport, Connecticut. It's Freetie, the alien, and evil Chiron 2. They're out to capture Lisa because they're evil through and through. Robotech to the rescue. But with hunters racing to the scene and Roy is by his side, first they'll save friend Lisa, then send the aliens for a ride. Here's my secret plan to save Lisa. Robotech to the rescue. Start your collection of Robotech action figures, each sold separately, new from Matchbox. We won! I'll get you yet, Rick. of life! Mark's blind. The 
Cyclops. Oh, mighty Cyclops, bestow light on us. Give us sight. Companions, I've located the Cyclops. All of you stand by. I may need you. We are ready. Cyclops, show your power, O oh creature of Poseidon! No! Not the ship! It's too dangerous, Nestor. Maintain your distance. Send me a research module. I have to save Telemachus. As you order. Telemachus, uh, my son. No, no, find the research module. Yes, right away. Telemachus! A human! There! Seize him, brothers! He must not escape! Great Cyclops, grant us life! He can't hold out for long. One against so many. Companions, Ulysses needs us. Everyone into action, now. Ulysses, where are you? I found the module. Over here, no, no. Oh, I'm tight. We'll make it. Oh, oh. oh great Cyclops, disintegrate that rubbish. Oh, ah, Ulysses, oh. No, no, aim the beam directly at the Cyclops' eye. <laughs> right, Telemachus, my son. Telemachus. Wake up! He's only fainted. No, no, help me! Yes, yes, good old Telemachus. Yumi, she's alive! My little Yumi. Go on, escape! We'll cover you! Nestor! Companions! No, stop! Without light from the Cyclops, they're quite harmless. Oh. Ah, misfortune is upon us! The great Cyclops is dead! The revenge of the gods will be terrible! And you, humans, who have taken away our Cyclops, all of you will be destroyed as punishment! to the shuttlecraft. Get away before the whole place blows up. Oh, great God, Poseidon, if the Cyclops was truly your creation, grant that Ulysses will never return home. Zeus, supreme overlord of Olympus, avenge us. Show this earthling that no one can defy your mighty will.
saw what looked like a strange face, did you? Yes, it looked like an ancient Greek god. A Greek god in the 31st century? How could such a thing be possible? I accelerated regeneration using iris photonic treatment. Yumi, hurry up and get well. Oh! I can't make head or tail of this trajectory. A black hole. We're being drawn into it. Shirka, maximum anti-attraction force. Not possible. The ship would shake apart. Shirka, that's in order. Which of you is called Ulysses? Who calls my name? Ulysses. I am Ulysses, why? Why did you destroy my Cyclops? Why did your Cyclops steal my son? Who do you think you are to defy Poseidon? Listen, Poseidon, not even a god has the right to steal a man's son. Miserable earthling, mighty Zeus, show your power. Ulysses, something strange is happening. I'm losing control of the ship. We're falling, losing energy. The iris is going out. It isn't possible. We must be dreaming. It's Olympus, right there in front of us. And dream or nightmare, our only chance of getting away is to go down to the iris and try to reactivate the energy drive. I'll go. Courage, friends. No matter what, I have to reach the transmission generators. Whoever dares defy the will of Zeus must be punished. Ulysses, you will undergo many trials before you are reunited with your loved ones in the land of your fathers. Now, come, shatter the wall of galactic ice, enter the universe of Olympus. works again. Nestor, run a check. Nestor! Nestor! You're a clay! Where are you? Companions! Companions, where are you? Companions, answer me! Vengeance of the gods has started. Oh, Father! 
Alive. You're alive. Oh, uh, Father, what happened? There's nobody here. We've entered an unknown world, but we'll return to Earth one day. Have courage, children. Let's go and find our companions. I promise you we will save him. Father, how could this have happened? The gods took revenge for the death of Cyclops. They've turned all our companions to stone, but we'll find out how to break this curse, I promise. I will discover the kingdom of Hades and the route back to Earth, I promise you. Don't cry, Don't Ulysses. Don't cry. Ulysses. Ulysses. The route back to Earth is wiped from my memory. The ship is now entering unknown space. And so began for Ulysses, Telemachus, Yumi, and Nono, the most fantastic of all voyages through a mysterious and secret universe ruled by hostile gods, lost and helpless in the strange cosmos of Olympus. Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Officers Ace and Kimberly, report to Space Marshal Vaughn. Officers Ace and Kimberly... Sounds like the old man's got his jets in an uproar again. Get serious. He wouldn't call us if it weren't important, Dexter. Hey, call me Ace, huh? You sent for us, sir? Affirmative, crew. We've received word that our old enemy, Borf, is up to another fiendish plot. Borf buzzers. Yes, and they're headed for Earth. You've got to stop them. Leave them to me, sir. They don't stand a chance against this space ace. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Hmm? Uh, well, what did you say? Uh, hello? Dexter! Uh, Officer Kimberly, how many times must I tell you to keep your little brother out of Space Command Headquarters? And where is Space Ace? Uh... He left to warm up the star pack. Come on, Dixie. I've got work to do. Don't worry, sir. We'll take care of those rotten buzzers. Whoops. Out. Out. You'd better watch those changes, Dexter. If anyone finds out Borf hit you with the Infanto Ray, they'll ground you until they find a cure. Golly, that could take forever. And I can't control the changes. They just... kind of happen. We'll worry about that later. Right now, we've got to save the moon colony. Yahoo! See you later, space invaders. Come in. Well, have you carried out my orders? Affirmative. The Space Command ship is now chasing us as you planned. 
Excellent. Now to start phase two of my operation. The grand, ready the infanta ray. But the infanta ray hasn't been perfected to use on humans yet. I've constructed a special ray, fool. One that will work only on the roots. Ah, uh, brilliant, Thor. Brilliant. I know. Now fire! <laughs> Perfect. Now to call my spy, Trader Red. You sent for me, boy. I've got a job for you, Red. I want you to lure Space Ace to the Moon Colony, and here's how you do it. Those buses are probably halfway back to Borf's space station. Whoops! We're picking up a distress call. This is Space Ace. We have you on our monitors. Can you read us? Roger, Space Ace. This is Trader Red. I was headed toward the moon colony when those buzzers hit me. We've lost all power and are sinking fast. Oh. Hang on, Trader Red. We'll swing around and give you a tow to the moon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sucker. <laughs> For these two valiant officers, I wouldn't be here to offer you this fantastic bargain. Cosmic kicklings! Aww, isn't it cute, Ace? Bob, he likes you, sir. Hey, what? Let's see if he's as smart as he is friendly. Go get it, fella. He's a clever little guy. But there's something familiar about those critters I can't put my finger on. <laughs> there's that fool space ace right where I want him. Surrender or pay the consequences. Writers, looks like we're coming to a commercial. And now we return with more Spiral Zone adventure.
Roger, cargo two niner. We're looking forward to getting your little package. General McFarland out. Well, Dr. Lawrence, you'll soon have what we've all been praying for. Yes, uh, providing Overlord has been fooled by our little trick. the most important cargo in the world in an ordinary transport plane to avoid attracting any attention. Well, my black widows, it seems some of you have developed your intelligence sources and some have not. Weeper, from you I receive no report at all, nor from you, Razorback. Now you will see why Bandit, rather than either of you, is my second in command. The aircraft carries a cylinder of Neutron-90, an ingredient MCC needs to make additional protective suits. This is the last Neutron-90 in existence because... Because the London Laboratory, which was the only place it could be made, was destroyed when the British government realized it would fall into our hands. Very good, Duchess Dyer. I can always count on you. Once again, you read my report, then spew it out as your own. It's dangerous to tread on me, Duchess Dyer. Dangerous for who, Bandit? Overlord isn't romantically interested in you. MCC doesn't know it yet, but the Neutron 90 is about to make an unscheduled stop. Now! We've lost them, General. Commander Courage, Zone Riders, scramble, scramble. So, Commander Courage, you and the Zone Riders have to retrieve that Neutron 90 from the New York Zone. We have to assume that Overlord brought that plane down, so he must be after the Neutron 90 also. It would be disastrous if it fell into his hands. Oh, quite. I'd never be able to make any additional protective suits. And Overlord would use it to create a weapon that would make your existing suits useless. Ah, uh, if I could just get my hands on him... I would make Overlord useless. Thanks to one of Dr. Lawrence's gadgets, we can not only pinpoint the location of the crash, but also get a look at it. <laughs> it's my SPRC, self-propelled reconnaissance camera. You see, this one is programmed to home in on the transport's locator signal. The pilot, he is alive. Yeah. He's turning into a zoner. But that's one tough fella. Yeah, I can vouch for that. He's Len Jacobs. He saved my life in the desert wars. I remember. You were wounded, half dead of thirst. He carried you over a mile on his back. And I swore one day I'd return that favor. Uh-oh. Trouble. Raise her back. I'm afraid to say that's all we're going to see. Why? Well, that's why. It happens every time. All right, let's move out. Commander, I know how you feel about Jacobs, but getting that Neutron 90 back from Overlord has to come first. I know, General, but once we have it, Jacobs is my next priority. Good. Go to it, Dirk. Central to Zone Riders. You are cleared for takeoff. We're all betting on you, Commander. Well done, Razorback. Well done. You not only brought me 
only the Neutron 90, but also the pilot. Yeah. Well, some people know how to get things done, and others just talk a good game. I have a game for you, Razorback. Russian roulette. That's enough. We have more important things to deal with than your petty differences. Open the container. <laughs> Empty! Razor back! I don't get it. Somebody must have... What did you two do with it? Don't appear more stupid than you are. As donors, they have no will to do anything other than what they're told. Quite right, Bandit. It was taken by someone who is not totally a zoner. Yet, where did you hide it, Lieutenant? Jacobs, Air Force, United States, serial number A, eh, something. I'll get more than your name, rank, and serial number. No! We need him to talk when the zonification is complete. Unless you and your troopers can find the Neutron 90 first. Search the crash area and expect the Zone Riders to put in an appearance. Everything appears clear, Commander. This is the easy part. They'll probably be waiting for us somewhere between here and Overlord's headquarters. Zone Riders to Mission Control Central. Do you copy? Reading you five by five, sir. Telemetry is reading full spectrum life science. Pulse respiration, radiation, all channels open. We'll lose voice transmission as soon as you enter the zone. So, I just want to say, good hunting, Dirk. Bring them both back. Head on it, General. All right, let's do it. You know, Duchess, when I was a mercenary soldier, I didn't tolerate laziness. How impressive, Reaper. I'll be sure to tell Overlook when I have dinner with him tonight. Let's try again, Lieutenant. Where did you hide the Neutron 90? Where? Tell me. Yes, Overlord. Fruit flavors, just like you. Oh, almost. 
fruit flavors, you ask? My nose was invented for the task. Well, how's it work? Just follow my nose. <laughs> it always knows. Kellogg's Fruit Loop cereal with natural fruit flavors. Orange, lemon, cherry, and lots of vitamin C. Part of this complete breakfast. Well, I'd like to experiment further with fruit loops. And you? I can't you need more fruit. Fruit, 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 fruit. And now we return with more Spiral Zone action. They've got it. Put up your weapons. <laughs> so the big, brave Zone Riders turn out to be nothing but... Now! <laughs> We've lost all life sign readings on Commander Curran. Respiration, pulse, everything. I hope he cut off his own transmission for some reason or other. Here comes company. Time to leave. That, Lieutenant, is my people destroying the Zone Riders. Time to leave, Lieutenant. Courage! There's no way out for you now! 
Jones. But this goes all the way to the garage. Well, we'll soon find out. This is Overlord. Intruder alert. Search and destroy. Search and destroy. Good. Transportation. It's time to repay a debt, Lieutenant. Center, son. Well, men, even though we... Destroy! Land. Destroy! Caution, Commander. The Needler is set on destroy. I know. Give me the Needler, Len. You don't want to destroy me. You're out of the zone now. Soon, you'll be normal again. Destroy! Destroy! No, Len. You don't need to obey Overlord's orders. It must be wonderful to have your son back. Tank's son is still lost in the zone. Oh, I'm sorry, Tank. 
You kept your promise, Dirk. You repaid your debt. And for Johnny and his mother, the nightmare is finally over. Yes, but there are millions of others, Cat. The war goes on. We'll be right back with more Spiral Zone action. And now we return with more Spiral Zone action. Of Saturday morning cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Whoa, what's happening? What's going on? No refunds, no refunds. <laughs> Let's get to the star pack. We can't let the Groots take over. The only way to beat them is to reverse the Infanto and hit Borf's space station. Watch out, Borf, old buddy. Because here we come. He wants to play fetch anymore. Hey, take it easy. Yo! Yikes! Asteroid, get ahead! That should hold you. Thanks, Kim. That'll keep him quiet for a while. We're getting a message. Uh-huh. I knew you were behind this, Barf. Your moon is now under my control. I'll have the groups fire its lasers at Earth unless your world surrenders to me. No way, Barfo. <laughs> Why, you big boy, we'll show you. I'm in charge now, Dexter, and I say... Settle down! Looks pretty quiet, though. Maybe he doesn't know we're here. He knows, all right. We're goners if we touch those mines. Blast them, Dexter! But which one? Eeny, meeny, money, mo! By the time he wakes up, we'll be long gone. Come on, let's find Borf's control room. <laughs> oh, Pete Kudas, you are my prisoners. He laser does, Tinhead. Let's see how tough you are without that blaster. Oops. Get them! Look out! Oh, wow, me! Come on! Play 
teammate. That's it. Ha <laughs> ha! I've got you now. Here, boy. Get the stick. Remember? Here. Think fast. Ah! Uh, uh, Let off me, you freaky furball! Come on. Now let's pay old Buddy Borth a visit. Seal off all levels. Run! There's the control room. We've come to shut you down, Borf. Space Ace and Kimberly. Clean up that trash, sort of room. No creep like you is going to sweep me off my feet, Borf. No! Here's the reverse ray. Bye, bye, Groots. <laughs> This ray could turn you back to normal too. Let's try it. Fools! <laughs> that ray only works on groups. Sorry, Ace. Your cure will have to wait. Stop to grab Borf. Just enough time to rig this to self-destruct and run. Now to pick up the Grootlings and head for home. The Moon Colony is safe, and the Grootlings will have a nice home in Space Command's Interplanetary Zoo. Well, I may not have gotten my cure, but at least we've got the Moon Colony and the Groots all under control. <laughs> Cut it out, you guys! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the Groots have got you under control too, Dexter. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> <You're mean. laughs> oh. Ten years ago, a gigantic space battle fortress of unknown origin blasted through a warp pole in hyperspace and crash-landed on Earth. Alerted to the threat of invasion from space, the people of Earth united to learn the secrets of the mysterious ship's advanced technology. The space fortress's design and capabilities are still not completely understood, but what Earth scientists have learned has led to a combination of computer and robotic technology called Robotech. The alien race, known as the Centrati, have followed the SDF-1, and now the Earth is under attack. Rick Hunter, an amateur flyer caught up in the planet-wide war, has become an unwilling Veritech fighter pilot, and he has rescued a beautiful young girl named Min -Mei. His old friend, Lieutenant Commander Roy Fulker, has reason to believe that young Rick may be in trouble. Rick, come in, Rick. The poor kid's just had to take on more than he can manage. Well, I can't leave him behind. Skull Leader to control. 
Lisa, I'm going back to pick up something I left down on the island. Captain Kramer will take command of the fighter group until I return. Over. Why are you returning? Over. Rick Hunter in fighter VT-102 is still back on the island, and I have to go pick him up now. That pilot's an imposter. I've gone through the entire registry, and I find no record of such a person. Well, that's easy enough to explain. He's a civilian, so he isn't listed in the military registry. What? A civilian? But I thought, uh, uh... Huh? Civilian? Who is he? Kevin, she's alive. Uh oh. The alien? I gotta go. She might panic if she sees that. Hope this thing will still fly. What happened? What's wrong? Why are you trembling like that? Huh? What are you looking at out there? What's there? No, you mustn't look out there! Why? What is it? What's wrong? Oh my gosh! What is it? Oh. I hate to interrupt you two, but you can't sit around here forever. Come on, let's go! Huh? <laughs> that big palooka seems to have formed a permanent attachment to you guys. No! Shh! Oh. Isn't it? Boy. It's really incredible. How's that for convenience? Fighters are safely aboard the ship now. Yes, sir. That's the last two, sir. All fighters are accounted for except for Commander Foker and VT-102. Good. I don't think we have to worry about Commander Foker. Vanessa, show me the positions of Armor 1 and Armor 10 on the monitor screen. Yes, sir. They're both approaching rendezvous point now. We should be making contact with them in about half an hour. Very good. Any sign of enemy craft, Claudia? No, Captain. It's all clear. Excuse me, Captain, but isn't that strange? What? After launching such a massive attack from orbit, why isn't the enemy continuing their attack? It just doesn't make sense, does it? That's bothering me, too. There has to be a reason they're just playing with us. Oh? oh? Do you really think they're just playing with us, Captain? Yes. They have the advantage, but they don't attack. They must have a reason. Huh. Shh. 
She doesn't want to go to the ship, Roy. She wants to go back to Macross Island. Are you crazy? The place is crawling with aliens. It would be suicide for her to go back there. Did she give any reason for wanting to go back? Well... Well, I'm worried about my aunt and uncle back in the shelter with the invaders all around them. They're perfectly safe there. The shelters are impregnable. But I still want to go back to the island. It's my home! I promise. As soon as the war's over, I'll take you back there personally. Oh. What do you mean, you'll take her back? I will! Huh? Huh? Ooh. Hold on a minute, Rick. This is Skull Leader calling SDF-1. Over. Did you find him? He was annoying a young lady. I had to rescue her as well. You rat! So that's our civilian pilot. I wondered why he didn't know how to fly his plane. Who's that old sourpuss, Roy? Old sourpuss? <laughs> that old sourpuss is our control operator, Lisa Hayes. And if she looks like an old sourpuss to you, you're not as grown up as I thought you were, Rick. <laughs> now listen, Commander Foker, you'd better have a good explanation for turning a Veritech fighter over to an amateur <laughs> civilian pilot. You could be court-martialed for this, you know. Ooh, she's mad. As for you, Rick Hunter, you're in a lot of trouble whether you know it or not. This whole thing's her fault. I think I'd apologize to her if I were you, Rick. Women her age can get awful mean, you know. Bridge Control, this is Skull Leader requesting landing instructions. Give us a bay number, you old sourpuss. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, bring your plane into Bay 504. <clears throat> It appears only half of them get back. Where is the Battle Fortress now? It's passing through the atmospheric ranges presently. Apparently, it's on its way to rendezvous with the other ships. What's your plan, Rita? We could shoot them down now, but I don't want that ship damaged. Once they're out of gravity, they can execute a hyperspace fall, taking them beyond the range of our guns. You have a point there, Exeter. Perhaps I'd better apply a little restraining force in order to slow them down a bit. Prepare a laser bombardment. Ready on gun for massive laser bombardment. Repeat, all gun range crews, radio lasers for total bombardment of target area. Stand by for order to fire. I got a little surprise for you, Rick. Wait till you see it. <laughs> Here we are. Come on. Was that really necessary, Roy? She could have been hurt. Golly, Rick, look at that. Somebody left this thing behind, so I've stashed it here. Oh, wow. My racer, I thought I'd never see it again. You saved it. Oh, thank you, Roy. Thank you, thank you, thank hey, you. Hey, cut it out, Rick. Oh, oh. Take it easy. I just thought you'd feel more comfortable flying in this than one of our Veritex. It doesn't turn into a battleoid. Oh, golly, Roy. I've seen huh? that plane before. It was in the air show this morning, Attention wasn't it? Attention all hands. We are approaching rendezvous with armor 1 and 10. Report to your docking stations immediately. All hands, report to your stations. I have to get going now. Ah. You two stay here and don't wander around. If you start exploring, you'll get lost. You can't imagine how enormous this ship is, so stay put. <laughs> Perfect docking alignment. The enemy ships are docking, sir. All right, tell your gunners to fire their beams between the ships. I don't care how many of the smaller ones are destroyed, but the large one must not be damaged. Yes, sir, Commander. Attention all gunnery crews. We will commence massive barrage. Take particular care not to damage the battle fortress. Gun commanders may fire with men. A brief Robotech intermission is required for these urgent messages. Robotech shall now resume transmission.
What's their position? The current attack is from the exact same location as the first one, Captain Global. Their orbit is 10,000 miles from here. Reporting, Miranda Cersei and Armor 3 were destroyed. They're tearing our fleet to shreds. What about our damages? We've taken no direct hits, Captain. No damage shown anywhere, sir. What is our position? Um, we're just closing our initial orbit, approaching our original position over Macross Island at an altitude of 100 miles. Claudia, steer for a landing on Macross Island. At 2,000 feet altitude, activate the fold system for a position jump. Are you sure you want to do that, Captain? The fold system hasn't even been tested yet. I realize how risky it is, Claudia, but if we stay in this position, we'll be totally defenseless. But we're not even sure how the system works. We can't just surrender, Lisa. We have to try everything first. Ready the fold system for a position jump, targeting the area behind the moon. Get your radar busy on an access check, Lisa. We'll make the jump from precisely 2,000 feet above the island. Huh? Don't we need permission from headquarters? This is an emergency. We don't have time for that. But, Captain, you know the regulations specifically... Uh, sorry, sir. I know what the regulations say, but I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. I just wanted Claudia, to... <gasps> you've got my order. Yes, sir, Captain. Attention all hands. Priority. Fold system standby. Readying maximum green energy at all power stations. All hands to emergency positions. Repeat. All hands to emergency positions. This is not a drill. Prepare for fold in T-minus five minutes and counting. Mark. just went to another shelter, that's all. Nothing's going to happen to anyone as smart as Minmay, isn't that right? Yeah. Are you planning on going somewhere? I'm gonna take you back to the island like I promised. You still wanna go, don't you? Because I'm not gonna hang around here one way or the other. Candy? Thanks. What's a fold? Oh, nothing to do with us. Come on, let's go. It's so small. Will it hold two people? If they're very friendly, it will. Uh. Here, put this on. Oh. Uh. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's so cute on you, Minmay. You could start a whole new fashion. <laughs> oh, you. to fly if you sit there. I'm sorry, Rick, but it's so tall. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of, Minmay. I'm an expert pilot. There now, okay? <laughs> we will interfold in ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Zero. Execute hyperspace fall jump. It may be impossible, but they did it. What will we do now, Commander? Uh, I want to be informed of their exact location immediately. Now, sir? Now. Huh? Oh! 
Let's have some light in here. Switching the backup generator, sir. Radar shows an extremely large object just beneath us, sir. Our jump target was the moon. That's what your large object is. No, it's too small to be the moon, sir. I'll put it on the monitor screen for you. <gasps> it's coming at us. No, we're moving toward it. <gasps> it's Macross Island, Captain Glover. Retro rockets, Claudia. Maximum thrust. It's no go. I'm getting no response whatever from the computer. Emergency, emergency. Prepare for impact. Prepare for impact. It's covered with ice, Captain. at all from the fan jet. Somehow, we seem to have drifted out into deep space, and that means we're in deep trouble. Oh my, isn't it romantic? Yes, it is. Perfectly all right. Don't get upset about it. <laughs> you hear all kind of weird noises in these things. <laughs> huh. I don't dare tell her it's our oxygen leaking out. Maybe this will hold it temporarily. Let's get out of here, okay? Hey, what's your hurry? Just relax and enjoy the view. If the boosters don't work, we're uh -huh. sunk. Comfy? Uh huh. We'd better try to find the battle fortress. Something funny's been going on around here. There it is! Looks like they're still fighting down there. Don't worry. They closed the landing base during combat. Huh? Maybe, maybe we can go through the hole he made. Contact with headquarters yet? No, Captain. I've tried, but I haven't been able to raise them. Are you sure there's no system malfunction? Negative. None at all. It's operating perfectly. Give me the reading on our position. The planet Pluto's orbit according to the computer plot. The planet Pluto? Is that possible? It can't be. I was against this fold system <gasps> all along. Captain. Oh, oh Captain. Captain. No, no, no. Settle down. Don't panic. All we have to do is refold to get right back where we started. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. I hope not, Captain. No! What is it? Yes. Hmm. What? It can't be. Impossible. I'll be right there. Captain? What's happened? Chief Engineer Lang tells me the fold system has vanished into thin air. <gasps> Sir, did you say vanished? That's what he told me. We'll never get back. going to be a long trip. In our next episode, Rick and Min may learn they have landed in a closed-off and forgotten section of the SDF-1. Try as they may, they can find no way out, and no one aboard the ship has any idea where they are. 
time passes slowly and cruelly for the imprisoned pair, as what started out to be a fun adventure turns into a deadly nightmare of hunger and exhaustion, driving them to the edge of hysteria. Don't miss The Long Wait, the next thrilling chapter in the saga of Robotech. have sent us in artwork. So, as long as you continue to send it in, we will continue to share it with the world. I'm a fancy schmancy art snob. So let us, without further ado, see the lovely artwork. And if you have anything to show us, you want to send it right in here to smc.maxout at gmail.com and we will air it for you. And if you haven't already, go max out that like button and subscribe to our channel. Oh yeah. And if you haven't already, go over and check out KJ and the Hizzle. Give it a little <laughs> max mash over there and subscribe to that. We're going to have some new videos up on that channel here soon as well. It's just an editing process and a one man war room. So. It takes a little bit of extra time, but they will be there, I promise you. And if you grown-ups haven't already, head on over to Friday Night Sucks. That is the adults channel that I have put together. That is for everyone who remembers the MTV animation, the sketch comedy from back in the day, all the good prime time stuff that 
you don't really see on lineups anymore. Now, it's only select things because, as you all know, the evil general YouTube is always on the prowl. So, we do what we can, but there is a whole lot of good stuff for you guys. And we also have some classic gory anime that's going to be starting February 2nd. It's going to be on at 10 because all the kitties should be going off to bedtime at 10 o'clock, even on the weekend, or they should at least not be looking at gory stuff on the internet. But that's it for now. Make sure that you stick around from now until one o'clock because today we really do have American Gladiators. I know I messed up. I said last week American Gladiators because I got my wires crossed and my schedule is mixed, mixed up. It was her fault. What did I do? So make sure you stick around for that. It's a good one today. I love these American Gladiators and the wrestling that we're seeing. Oh, it's a have them back. It's a lovely thing. So make sure that you are here on Saturdays and tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Whoop! Easter Saturday time! I'm the only place to be for Saturday morning cartoons and the awesomest closers! Saturday morning cartoon next Studios Hollywood. This is American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champion. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini. Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Mike Adamley, glad you could join us for this brand new season of American Gladiators. Once again, we have scoured the countryside and we have come up with some outstanding contenders, 20 men and women who will test themselves in a variety of events and put their athletic skills on the line with a chance to win over $150,000 in cash and prizes. And we've got two brand new events, a revamped Eliminator Final. We've got four new gladiators who are absolutely awesome and I've got a new sidekick, Hall of Fame fullback from the Miami Dolphins, still looking lean and mean, Mr. Larry Zonka. Good to have Good to you, pal. Larry, even though you're a big guy, I know you root for the little man. And in our contenders, we have some little, some a little bit bigger than little, but they're all working against a common cause, and that's to beat the American Gladiators. And that storyline is going to be fun to, to watch play out. Well, they're all working against long odds, let's face it. And I can associate myself with that, having started out with the Miami Dolphins when they were the doormat of the American Football League, and then being the, the, the down-and-out team with a long shot. I kind of associate myself with the contenders a little bit. Larry, it's good to have you here. I know you're going to enjoy the competition. Let's meet our contenders for this preliminary round. In our women's preliminary, please welcome Maria Nicktine of Cincinnati, Ohio, a human services worker. And her opponent, Esther Ratner of Tempe, Arizona, an industrial design professor at Arizona State. In the men's competition, here's Dwayne Thomas of New York City, a groundskeeper at Yankee Stadium. 
and his opponent, Lincoln Simons of Studio City, California, a stuntman. Esther, 37 years old and a college professor at Arizona State, you are going to be the champion of a lot of people back at home and watching this on television. Yeah, I know. My students are going to be watching me, and they're going to be seeing if I did my homework or not. 37 years old, you're giving away about 10 years in age to some of the other contenders. I know, but spirit has no age. I like the line. Save that one. A stuntman by profession? That's got to help here because we have several events that happen in midair. Yeah, uh, well, I hope uh, my 12 years experience in the business as a stuntman will help me as being uh, versatile, being able to use my body in a lot of different ways. Let's hope you're not a fall guy. Larry? Marie, you're into dance, you're into aerobics, you're into weightlifting. Do you think all those things are going to help you against some of these gladiators? Especially the aerobics. The endurance, I find, is going to be really, really hard. So I'm hoping it'll pay off and make me a winner. Well, good luck to you. Thank some you. of these gladiators are in very good shape themselves. Dwayne, ground crew supervisor, Yankee Stadium. Yeah. You know all about turf and how to hang on to it. You think it'll help you against these people? Yeah, I feel that I'll have no problem here today. I'm looking forward to the fun and the excitement. All right, best of luck to both of you. Mike? Contenders, all the best. And it's time to get it on because I see the gladiators getting that look in their eye. Have a great preliminary round. Once again, this is how our competition works. Our contenders, two men and two women, will compete against our American gladiators in seven very different events. Now the contender who amasses the most points in those seven rigorous confrontations automatically advances to the next round, has a chance to move one step closer towards our championship final, and maybe most important, can tell his and her friends back home that, hey, I had the right stuff. I was an American gladiator contender, and I did it my way. Coming up next, our first event, the men's joust. And here's Larry to tell you all about it. In the joust, a contender has 30 seconds in which to knock a gladiator off his platform in an attempt to earn 10 points. The men are up first, and Thunder draws first assignment. His first opponent will be Dwayne Thomas of New York. Aside from working at Yankee Stadium, Dwayne also holds a black belt in karate. And Larry, the ideal technique here is to strike hard and strike quickly. And that's exactly what Thunder does as Dwayne Thomas goes off in just two seconds. Not much of a battle. And Lincoln Simons is up next, a veteran of 12 years in the stuntman business. Makes his home in Studio City, California. He'll be trying to do a little bit better against the mighty Thunder. Once again, Thunder the first to strike, but Lincoln doing a great job of keeping his balance and has Thunder off balance momentarily. Lincoln being able to, oh, Thunder steps across. Commits the violation, loses the match. All right, score one for the stuntmen. Nicely done, Lincoln. I don't know if you were able to stun Thunder with any of your blows, but you did manage to get him to lose his balance and have him come over to your pedestal, which means automatic disqualification. How'd you do it? What was the secret? I, I just saw his blows come and he was attacking. I just tried to avoid and then counterattack as best as possible. I knew it'd be tough, but I just did my best. Thunder, I think you got a little greedy. You saw him perhaps yeah. in a bit of trouble, went for the kill and made a mistake and walked over on his side. Balance is something I'll need to work on a little bit, but power is something I'll never lack, I'll tell you that. You'll get the balance, all right. Well done, nicely done, Lincoln. Lincoln Simons takes the early lead in our men's preliminary. 10 zip over Dwayne Thomas. But there's a lot of action left on this edition of American Gladiators, including the wall, our game of assault. But up next, our women's chance to take up arms in the joust. There's nothing different here. I'd say something's very different here. That something is Kellogg's fruitful brand. Fruitful Bran is a high-fiber cereal that's a feast of raisins, dates, apples, and golden honey. Here's fiber made delicious. Discover new Kellogg's Fruitful Bran and make every brand new day more fruitful. Getting in the drugs and being high. Yeah, 
gosh, Darlene, it sure is amazing how much we have in common. I know, Larry. We both love three-car pileups. We both were built in Buffalo. And we both know wearing safety belts helps save thousands of lives. Yeah, this is fascinating. Don't mind, Vince. He's getting over a bad break. I know. Janet's picking up the pieces, too. They're in here. I wish they understood it's all worth it to get people to buckle up. Hey, lacerated lovebirds, I sense a major crush. <laughs> could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Talk about head over heels. It's an alien. No kidding. Where? It's living in America. I like what they've done with the place. It loves cats. Can't get enough of them. <coughs> it's Alf, and now it's everywhere. He's debonair, and yet fuzzy. My parents just don't understand our relationship. I mean, this whole cat thing's been blown all out of proportion. <coughs> Alf. Alf, alien life form new from Galico. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women are getting ready for their turn in the joust in this preliminary round of the American Gladiators. Gold is up first, and she'll take on Maria Nishting, who has the support of her family. They've come all the way from Cincinnati to watch her work. Maria had to pass two tests to get here, Mike. In addition to attending our contender search in Cleveland, Maria also was a winner of our regional tryout held by our Cincinnati affiliate, WIII-TV in Cincinnati. Once again, if the contender, in this case, Maria cannot gold off that pedestal before the 30 seconds elapses, she'll earn 10 points. Gold having trouble with that pugil stick, but did manage a couple of early shots. Maria delivering some significant blows almost blew the pugil stick out of Gold's hands at one point. We should also mention that if a contender can last the entire 30 seconds, go the distance, so to speak, that's worth five points for the draw. And Maria going to the underside of Gold with a couple of body shots now. But Gold delivering some overhand shots to Maria's head, giving her a little double vision. Finally, Maria, somebody stood up for the contenders. A nicely earned, and I do mean earned, draw. Man, that was tough. That was really tough. Gold, you did one of those baton kind of things. Yeah, well, you know, they can do a lot of things, but I'm not going to fall off of here because I'm solid gold. You are solid gold, and Maria, you earn points because of the draw. Congratulations. Maria's opponent is Esther Ratner, a professor at Arizona State and a martial arts enthusiast. At 38 years of age, she's 16 years older than her opponent. But remember what she told us earlier, Under! spirit has no age. Well, Larry, I get the feeling that Esther's gonna need more than spirit here against gold. She's going to need an iron jaw, Mike. <laughs> gold just wailing away, Esther on her knees, and referee Larry Thompson blows his whistle. Gold thinks she's victorious. Let's listen to Larry's decision. We had a disqualification on the part of the contender. Once you go to your knees, you must make every attempt to get up. And so the winner, Gold. Well, an unhappy decision with the crowd, but Gold likes it. I think it was the correct one. Esther was taking a pounding. All right, Professor, use your analytical mind and tell us what happened to you up there. Well, I just, if she, you know, she came at me so fast, if I had just gotten back up again, because I wasn't getting hurt, I just needed to stand up, and she was coming down hard on top of me. So as we say in the classroom, back to the drawing board? Definitely. Okay, congratulations to both of you. So Gold comes out swinging, and as a result, only Maria Nickting comes away with points in the women's joust. Five zip over Esther. And it looks to be a tough competition for our women contenders. After one event in our men's preliminary, Lincoln Simons holds a 10 zip advantage over Dwayne Thomas as the men prepare to take on the wall. And Larry, the contenders have 60 seconds to ascend our 32 foot wall while a gladiator follows in pursuit. Now using a course of specially designed hand grips, the man who reaches the top first earns 10 points. Our men's leader, Lincoln Simons, will be trailed up the wall by Turbo. Dwayne trails by 10 points, but earlier he mentioned why you can't get discouraged. The main winner in this is just that you have to be determined. No matter what gets you down, no matter if you fall off the balance beam and slam your body into one of the, you know, the cushions, you just have to get up and keep going. And he'll take on Gemini. 
And keep in mind that our contenders are given a 10 second head start. There's Lincoln Simons, there's Dwayne Thomas. Trying to pick his way along this 32 foot wall. Dwayne goes off early. And now Lincoln Simons will try to keep Turbo off of him. Really a contender can't afford to, to look back and watch that gladiator. All he can think about is the top. And Lincoln is gonna make it. Lincoln demonstrating some real hand strength going up those grips. Great effort, here's Mike. Just another day at the office for this man, the stuntman Lincoln, nicely done. Thank you. He had my foot there for a while. I, I felt it, but I just kept on holding on and trying my best. Like the view up here? Yeah, it's nice, I'm ready to do a high fall. 32 feet never looked so good to this man. Nicely done, Lincoln. 10 more points for Lincoln Simons, and as a result, he now has a 20-0 lead over Dwayne after two events. And in our women's competition, Maria Nickting leads Esther Ratner by five as they stand by at the wall. And Maria has a concerned look on her face as she gets set to go. She'll be followed by Blaze. Her opponent, Esther, is getting ready in her attempt to outscale Diamond. Ready! Both contenders getting off the mark fairly well right at the sound of the whistle. Making good progress, let's see if it holds. Once again, each contender given a 10 second head start. This is not the kind of thing you can practice at home. A contender really has to rely on just their instincts. As Diamond goes flying, she can't hang onto the wall, so Esther's got a free run. Meanwhile, Blaze pulls Maria off. All Esther has to do is maintain her concentration and not blow it here, and she'll pick up 10 points. Easier said than done. It takes a little doing as she makes it up over the wall for the 10 points. Esther, you had, I don't know if you could feel it, I, I trust that you did. Diamond had a hold of one of your legs. I know, she was tugging. She you was were tugging. able to shake her off. I did, I did. It was a little bit of my martial arts background there. I couldn't kick, but I, I could shake. Esther, congratulations. She makes it to the top of the wall. We'll be back with more of the American Gladiators right after this. So for scaling the wall, Esther takes away 10 points and now leads Maria by a count of 10 to five after two events. There's much more to come on the American Gladiators, including Human Cannonball and our contest of Powerball. But up next, Assault. If you're looking for a little excitement, Diet Coke has a chance you'll jump at. It's the Diet Coke Sony Adventure of a Lifetime Sweepstakes. Winners win a trip across Europe on the world's finest luxury train. Or the remarkable new Sony Watchman TV. For details, look for store displays of Diet Coke with 100% NutraSweet. But hurry, enter before it's too late. You may just win the Adventure of a Lifetime. One perfect color. One perfect coral, only from Revlon. He says I'm a gorgeous blonde. I say I'm a smart blonde. I use preference. The color is rich with subtle shadings, and my hair has such life. Well, that's the preference difference. He thinks I'm worth it. He's right. Performing preference from L'Oreal. <laughs> shape our future we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the navy of today corning see-through vision saucepan withstands heat that turns ordinary saucepans into sauce best of all it lets you see your meal before it's all over Visions by Corning. It's visibly superior. Why I Like Showbiz Pizza by Jennifer Marie Adams. Showbiz is where kids of all ages can have fun with rides, games, shows, and pizza. 
If you're a kid, I highly recommend you go. You could even bring your little brother. You got it right, it's time for fun. That show is pizza, kids are number one. You can dance, you can play, you can do it your way. Show this pizza, where a kid can be a kid. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood and more of the American Gladiators. And in this men's preliminary round, Lincoln Simons leads Dwayne Thomas 20 to zip after two events. Next up, the assault. Assault is a 60-second contest where our contenders attempt to hit a target placed above the gladiators using a variety of weapons. First up is the crossbow. If unsuccessful there, he may then dash across to our arena to shoot with a rocket launcher. From there, it's on to safe zone number three where a cannon awaits. And another move closer to the target brings the contender to a handgun. And a fifth and final safe area leaves the contender with three softballs to hurl at the target. If all the ammunition's been exhausted, a contender can earn four points if he can cross the finish line before the minute is up. And doing the honors for the gladiators, the always dangerous Nitro, and first up for the contenders, Lincoln Simons. As we mentioned, Lincoln, a stuntman by trade. Now here's a guy who once fell from a third story window onto a moving Ferris wheel. So assault should be no problem for him. It's already been a problem, Mike. Nitro took out the crossbow with a single shot, disarming his first weapon for him. Lincoln takes his time here in the second safe zone with the rocket launcher. Sends himself in. It appeared that he nicked the bottom of that target. That's all he has to do is hit any portion of it. And he did. Lincoln, a happy guy as you watch the replay here. You see the rocket coming in from the left and just the tail fin nips the target. That was worth seven points, and now he has a 27-0 lead over Dwayne Thomas. Needless to say, Dwayne will have to score here. Ready? Dwayne doing a little change up in his pace as he comes across. He looked like a defensive back coming across there, didn't he, Mike? Nice moves. mentioned that Dwayne works as a ground supervisor at Yankee Stadium. This is a little like standing in the middle of batting practice without a glove to defend yourself. Dangerous point where you reach for the cannon. The hand is exposed and you can see that's what Nitro's aiming at. Let's fire there, Dwayne. Oh! oh. Stay right here, I'll get the trainer. Right. Here's a Dwayne was hit in the eye. As you see, you'll see it come in from the middle of your screen or upper right side of your screen. And it's so fast, that ball's traveling in excess of 100 miles an hour. Glanced off, it appeared that it hit the edge of his goggles, but we're not sure at this point. Here's Mike with Dwayne. Dwayne, I guess, uh, thank goodness for ice bags and protective goggles. Yeah, that's true. But um, when I when I was planning on coming to the show anyway, this was the man that I feared the most anyway, because I knew Nitro was a crack shot all the time. I watched a few of the shows, and I always see Nitro get his man. But Nitro, Nitro is not a, a headhunter. He's a fair competitor. He's just a good shot. Yes, definitely, definitely. And this is let the audience know those balls are coming pretty fast. Does that sting a little bit? Yeah, it stings a little bit, but otherwise, I'm all right. Okay, put that ice bag back where it belongs. Okay. And a nice round of applause for Dwayne as we hope he'll be able to continue. In the meantime, Lincoln's hit increases his lead over Dwayne 27 to zero. It's the women's turn in assault now where Esther holds a five point lead over Maria after two events. Esther's up first and earlier she told us how martial arts motivates her to compete. And normally I wouldn't have. In the past I would have said, oh, I'm too old or you know, nah, you know I don't want to do it. Now I'm, yeah, bring it on, I'm ready. You know, I want to do this. Esther practices a form of martial arts known as Ja Shin Do, or the way of self-belief, and you can see that focus in the look on her face. <laughs> she did a little Ja Shin Do uh, skip to the loo there, dodging those <laughs> tennis balls. Esther's first shot off the mark. She does well. She faces upfield, Mike, keeps her eye on the ball, moves well from, from safe zone to safe zone. She goes a little low and outside with a rocket launcher. 37 years old from Tempe, Arizona, professor of industrial design at Arizona State University. 
Mike Diamond's no slouch with that cannon. She's laying those tennis balls out there in rapid fire succession. And I think what happened to Esther there, Larry, she stopped to admire her shot, or at least see if it hit the target, and she left herself wide open to be hit. So no points for Esther Ratner, and now it's Maria Nickting's turn. She led 5-0 after the joust. She trails 10-5 coming in here, so if she hits that target, she can regain the lead. Setting herself with a crossbow. Very, very close. Mike, she's very cautious in her approach to this game. Takes no risk, takes a long time to sight her weapons. In addition to working against the Gladiator, the contender's also working against the clock. They have 60 seconds to get the job done. Her shot with the rocket launcher, wide. Get a little view over Diamond's shoulder of just what she's shooting at there. You can see that distance looks far on camera, but it isn't. It's very close and the balls are going in excess of 100 miles an hour. So far, so good. She hasn't hit the target yet, but she's still alive. About 10 seconds to go, however. She's used up a lot of time on her early weapons, Mike. Three, two, that's it. Well, <laughs> the one that didn't count you right in the bullseye. Little dismayed. So Diamond shuts out the women in assault. And after three events, there's no change in the score. Now let's go down with Mike, who's standing by with Dwayne Thomas. Sometimes when a dream evaporates and it's beyond your control, it's a bitter pill to swallow. Dwayne Thomas, because of an injury that he suffered to his eye, a scratch cornea in the uh, assault game, has to uh, withdraw from the competition. And I know you're hurting deep down inside, both uh, mentally and physically. This is true. I wanted to carry this out, but hey, sometimes it happens as winners and losers, and I enjoyed being here. Thank you. We're going to miss you, and uh, the big thing right now is we're concerned about the eye, and I know you're going to go to the hospital and, and get it looked at, and we think it's going to be okay, and uh, if at all possible, we'd like to have you, have you back, Dwayne. I'd like to be back. Okay. The man who takes over in his place, Nate Foster, a fine decathlete, unfortunately, you carry no points with you into the, the last four competitions. I've been in that position before, and uh, I want to pull the slack up for Dwayne because he's a great competitor. I practiced with him, and um, he's a great guy, and he deserves the best, and I'm going to give him the best for him. One of the nice things about American Gladiators, the contenders pull for one another. Congratulations, and good luck to you, and again, Dwayne. And a nice round of applause for the effort Dwayne has displayed today, and we wish him the best. Now it's on to Human Cannonball, where Nate will take over for Dwayne. Earlier, Nate told us why keeping in shape and competitions like American Gladiators are important to him. When I do have children, I want to be able to play and do the things with them. I don't want to just be sitting back on the couch and, you know, having my kid tug on me, say, hey, Dad, come on, let's go bike or let's go run or let's go surf. I want to be able to do that. Okay, Dad, let's play human cannonball. In this event, each contender given two swings, each successful attempt worth five points. A contender can earn a total of ten in this event. And Lincoln Simons, who has a commanding lead, will swing against Laser. Nate has to take on Thunder. Here they come. Nate doing a good job. Almost shook Thunder off the pad, but couldn't quite cut it. 190 pounds of momentum coming at Thunder. Thunder took it on the shoulder pretty good as we take a look through the helmet cam. We'll see exactly what Nate was seeing as he comes up on Thunder. If you'll notice, Thunder crouches down just a little bit right before impact to kind of deflect that blow. And now both contenders will get their second chance. This time, Nate takes on Laser and Lincoln against Thunder. Oh, and what, what a great job by Laser to keep his balance. Again, Nate doing a great job of using that momentum, almost knocking the Gladiator off. But Laser's prepared, takes the hit right here on the replay, does a spin almost like a discus thrower, maintaining his balance. A rare shutout in Human Cannonball keeps the men at the same score after four events. There's more ahead on American Gladiators, including Powerball and our smash hit, Atmosphere. But up next, the women's turn to swing on Human Cannonball. McGruff here with Regina to say, users are losers. You know it's okay to say no. I'm telling you it's Learning how to say no. Say no. Wrong. 
might stick around a few more years. But Vince... No more dashboard du jour or Vince under glass. Huh? But Vince... Look out! Oh! 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 Even with airbags, Vince, you still got to remember to buckle your safety belt. Now you tell me. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Shira, Apollo 7. Bean. Gordon, Apollo 12. We had more to conquer than space. I had a runny nose. And I had a stuffy head. We used Actifed. How do you conquer cold symptoms? Actifed. When I was a kid, I loved to wear bandages just to get attention. But now I use Band-Aid brand clear from Johnson & Johnson. It's the bandage with the see-through strip. So people hardly notice I'm wearing a bandage at all. Which is nice, because now that I'm grown up, I want people to notice me. Not my bandage. Only Johnson & Johnson makes Band-Aid brand clear. Clearly the best-looking bandage ever. Help us help retarded children. Look for Johnson & Johnson coupons in Sunday's paper. I was asleep on the sofa when I heard, Dad, why doesn't the jello gelatin fall out when it's upside down? And then I felt something cool plop on my face and I heard, Sorry, Dad. Jello gelatin. You can't be a kid without it. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women are now set to go in the human cannonball. And after three events in this preliminary round, Esther Ratner leads Maria Nickting 10 to 5. Esther Ratner in the blue, Maria Nickting in the red, each contender given two swings. Again, each successful attempt worth five points. Maria will swing first against Diamond, while Esther has to take on Blaze. And again, this is the event where the contender has all the advantage with that swing momentum. Here they come. And there they go. Both Blaze and Diamond go flying. So five points for both Esther and Maria Nickting. Both our contenders doing a good job doing putting a double whammy on our gladiators. As you see, Maria tucked up perfectly. Great body position, and she sends Diamond flying. And Diamond and Blaze have shaken out the cobwebs and they're getting set to go. This time Maria will take on Blaze, Esther will take on Diamond. And again, once the contender hits that blocking pad flush, the gladiator has almost no chance to keep her balance. And once again, the contenders are perfect, right on the money. Well, they aligned their bodies perfectly, tucked into a bowling ball position, and struck the gladiators and knocked both gladiators flying off the pedestals. Mike? Maria and Esther, I hope you have a good dentist because all of America saw your dental work. They saw your cavities, they saw your molars. Where did you guys get that ah scream? Uh, we just decided we were going to go for it. We just we planned it, and we just did it together as a team. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it did work. <laughs> We planned it, it worked, it was a success. Let's take them. I like that, congratulations. Well, the women have to like the scores as well, Mike, as Esther and Maria each earned 10 points. So now, after four events, Esther now leads Maria by a count of 20 to 15. In the men's competition, Lincoln has a healthy lead on Nate, 27 to zip, as we begin our fifth event, Powerball. Our leader, Lincoln Simons, is a well-rounded athlete, a stuntman and a rugby player. He told us what it takes to win in Powerball. You go out there and you, you see who's got the best tools, you know? And I think uh, with my experience in rugby, my, my tools will be pretty sharp. Lincoln will have to be plenty sharp in this event, so will Nate Foster. Once again, both contenders have 45 seconds to score as many goals as they can. Ready? Goals deposited in the center cylinder worth two points. Those outside cylinders worth one. 
Get him out. Nate trying to spin move on Nitro. That didn't work. Turbo muscles Lincoln down to the ground. Still, the contenders have yet to score. This must bring the memories back of rugby to Lincoln right here as he kind of but then gets one in for a score. Back up, back up. He paid the price a little there. No score, Red. Let him out of the zone. Let him out. Turbo extremely quick for a big man. However, finally Lincoln, after about four deeks, put a move on him that counted. No Angered Turbo a little bit, hit him a little after the score, really, drove him into the side cushion. Gladiators more than a little aggressive. They're almost not letting the contenders get out of the safe area. And Lincoln manages to score right at the whistle, even though he got the big hit. Here's Mike. Lincoln and Nate, you did something that contenders very, very rarely do. And that's make our gladiators a little angry because those three gentlemen love, love shutouts. And you denied them that satisfaction. Lincoln, you won this particular match. And I think you uh, dazzled them with some of your footwork. It was tough. They were just, you know, waiting for me to come out and they weren't letting me out. But when I got the chance, I tried to make the most of it. Nate, you got off to a great start with that early goal and then it kind of all fell apart. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've, I've been away from football for about 15 years, <laughs> and seeing those guys, those two big guys, just kind of remind me I played a quarterback in high school and never saw guys that big when I was carrying the ball. <laughs> well, the perspiration on both your bodies tells the story. A tough, rough game of Powerball. Yeah. Lincoln and Nate, nice job. And as Lincoln mentioned earlier, today his tools were pretty sharp as he takes a shutout away from the Gladiators and three points away for himself. As a result, he cushions his lead over Nate to a score of 30 to 1. The women are up next where Esther leads Maria 20 to 15. Take a look now at Ice, Gold, and Lace who will take on our contenders in this battle of Powerball. And earlier Maria told us why competing here on the American Gladiators is important to her. I had total knee reconstruction about four years ago and I, I couldn't walk for about a year and I realized that that's the pits. I mean, and after that, I just, I always have been athletic. But then I started training harder and doing aerobics and running and cycling, and I figure, I'm not going to make a million dollars doing this. It's for my own benefit. And here's a chance where I can say, hey, I've worked hard, and I can show people that I've worked hard. And she's quite the heroine back home in Cincinnati, Ohio. Ready! And now she's got her work cut out for her against three tough gladiators. Maria in the red scores quickly and early. Esther in the blue loses her headgear. Let him out. Warning. See Maria doing a step over and bowl through, but misses getting the, the ball into the scoring pot. Well, undaunted, she goes at it again. This time, Ice takes her down. And look at Esther giving away all that weight to goal, and she manages to score. She's not real big, but she is relentless. She hangs in there tough. Maria trying to duck under move again. That didn't work against Gold. Time now running out on both contenders. And it's showing on Maria. Her legs are very tired. There goes Esther. And Maria is slammed to the turf again. Esther not the least bit intimidated by the fact she doesn't have a helmet on. She's hung in there tough and scored two points. Really displaying the stamina of a woman 10 years or junior. Over to you, Mike. Let's all take a deep breath. It's finally over, Maria. Did you ever, in your wildest dreams, think 45 seconds could last that long? No, but I wish it would have lasted longer. <laughs> you still have a little fight left in you. Always, I never quit. Your partner here did a great job. She even lost her headgear early on. Esther, for 37 years old, young, I might add. That was an unbelievable effort. Thank you, I put everything into it. I said I brought some spirit with me. Now I know Gold told you something after the match was over. What did she say? She said you were tough, not too many people get by me. I appreciated that she said that to me. Maybe Esther, you won this uh, Powerball match. It was terrific. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, you too, Maria. Congratulations. Spirit has no age, and it also earns a 2-1 victory for Esther in Powerball. And for her efforts, Esther picks up an extra point against Maria after five events. Only two events left in this preliminary round of competition, including the Eliminator. But up next, our game of Atmosphere. Stu Stu Studio, studio line from L'Oreal, new Mega Gel. 
Mega Hold. New modeling spritz. Spritz for lift. Sculpt your hair any way you like it. Studio line from L'Oreal. Thursday, don't miss the second premiere episode of Day by Day. Will Ross win Kristen's heart? Only geeks get good grades. I get all A's. Of course, I deeply respect geeks. Can the kids handle the pressures of preschool? I'm a failure. Day by Day week continues with an all-new episode of Day by Day, Thursday after Cosby. The world's worst trained police force has graduated. Ah! And now they're back. This is serious. To mess it up again, the network television premiere, Police Academy 2, next. Assault. You mess with me, you're making a mistake. And batter. Hey! Energize your Friday with The Highwayman. It's so easy to own to sell. It's so easy. The 1988 Toyota to sell easy. The price will take you right back to the 50s. Only $59.98. Reliable Toyota to sell with a price dialed down to the 50s. Right now, power and zip, contemporary, up-to-the-minute style, good old 50s price. Who could ask for anything more? It's a beautiful morning. It's funny, but since McDonald's started serving hot handheld breakfasts, the world appears on everyone's doorstep by 7. And just smile. More folks are having breakfast with famous people. Taking some clean and the Pacific Ocean opens for business promptly at nine. Perhaps McDonald's sizzling bacon, hot McMuffins, and homemade biscuits can't take all the credit, but even the birds have noticed McDonald's is America's morning place. The police have captured the infamous Southside sniper. Christie's having one of those days. Gentlemen! How could you do that to Blaine? Blaine, Blaine who? You Investigative reporter plays ex-husband in TV studio. Dear Wong! I have seen some lowlifes in my time in this business. You meet them all. You are the worst! Kathleen Turner. Good evening. Burt Reynolds. Christopher Reeve. Switching Channel. Rated PG. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Now, in specially marked Ralston cereals, when you get a red Corvette... Mom! You win a real Corvette, and Tang can win! Get one hot racer free in every box of Freakies, Cookie Crisp, Honey Graham Jets, and Fruit Islands brand cereals, and if you get a red Corvette... You win a real Corvette! Everyone gets a hot racer free, and ten lucky winners get... Happy birthday! Real Corvettes! So what, Dad? Uh, did you get Mom anything special? <laughs> Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood for more of the American Gladiators. Here's Larry. And now the stage is set for our next event, Atlas Fair, where two contenders compete simultaneously in an effort to roll their ball into one of the red, white, and blue scoring pods, worth one point each. At the same time, two gladiators try to keep the contenders from scoring by knocking them out any way they can. And Larry, it may look like an amusement park ride, but for the contenders and the gladiators, there's nothing amusing about it. It is 60 seconds of hard, hard work. The legs have to constantly be moving to keep those Atlas spheres moving and to move them into the scoring pod. Referee Larry Thompson starting the match, and those plumes are nitrogen smoke, which signify that a contender has indeed scored. Foster moving very well, but Nitro does a good job of keeping him out of that scoring pod. Lincoln can't get his to stop, now using Nate as sort of a, a barrier, a shield, to keep the Gladiators off of him. He's got a breakaway going down towards the other end. Let's see if he can capitalize. Lincoln's putting a lot of miles on his uh, atmosphere there. He's been up and down the track twice already. And so far, he's got nothing to show for it. Maybe here, let's see. Can he get it to stop? No! Turbo knocks him out. Both contenders having a tough, tough time scoring here. <laughs> I tell you what, Lincoln is rolling all over the inside of that cage. He's got a few of our cameramen uh, getting their heads on a swivel, too, or they're going to be under an atmosphere out there. Here he goes, Lincoln trying to save it again. Can't do it. Time running out, and that is it. Oh, a fine defensive job by Nitro and Turbo as they shut the contenders out in atmosphere. 
After six events, their score still stands 30 to one. The women are loading in now, and after five events, Esther leads Maria 22 to 16. And a look at the field of play and atmosphere. As Esther Ratner getting loaded into her cage and Lace about to move into her confined space. Ready red, ready blue, gladiators ready, spotters ready. Referee Larry Thompson making sure everything is in order. And the match is underway. And Lace having a dilly of a time trying to get her atmosphere out of that scoring pod. But Esther's having no problem. She's got it moving. And she's right on the edge of the oh, oh, she does. Yeah. You know, Mike, she has a little problem getting the atmosphere to settle. She just doesn't have enough weight. But she's got all kinds of leg power. She can certainly get it moving in a hurry. A lot of tension to say that atmosphere weighs more than she does. Almost scored there. Maria has yet to score, however. She's in that red atmosphere. Esther's got it on a move again, and she scores again. Boom of uh, uh, smoke blowing up through there almost raises Esther up off the floor. Now she needs an assist for Maria to get it out of there. It didn't help. Here comes Maria now. Maria breaking into the open. Can she settle it? She's got it. So she's finally on the scoreboard. Lace and Esther at a standstill there, stalemate. Maria with one last ditch effort to try to tie this match. To no avail, and Esther wins it two to one. Two very tired ladies, as a very happy mom looks on. Esther, if anybody deserved the right to relax, you certainly did after that go around in uh, atmosphere. Definitely. I have a feeling some of my colleagues are really wondering how I became a college professor. They may revoke your credentials after this is all over. I don't know, though. If I don't get tenure, maybe there's another job for me doing something like this. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. A 2-1 win for Esther in Atmosphere, and here's how she did it. Steady into the pod, and once she's in, Esther forces all her weight to the back of the ball to stop it. Great technique. It's another insurance point for Esther as she now takes a 24-17 lead over Maria with one event remaining. Who will advance into the quarterfinal round? That will be decided when we return. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood for our final event. The Eliminator. Mike, both contenders start at the treadmill and must run against the belts to reach the top. Once there, each contender must cross a 30-foot span using a specially designed handbike. Then across the balance beam where instead of medicine balls, gladiators now throw weighted blocking pads at the contenders. And Larry, if our contenders have made it this far, it's time to climb a 20-foot cargo net. From there, it's a wild ride down a zip line, which will take the contender over the entire length of the arena floor. From there, a final straightaway, where the contender has to negotiate a set of hurdles. And then a very important choice, which lane to pick, because behind three of these doors lie American gladiators all bent on keeping the contenders from crossing that finish line. Esther now leads Maria by a score of 24-17 coming into the Eliminator meaning that Maria would have to beat Esther by at least three and a half seconds in order to win this prelim and advance to the quarterfinals. And Larry, not only do our five preliminary round winners advance to the quarters, but the next three highest finishers also go as well. So this race, very important for both women. Esther in the blue, Maria in the red. And up the ramp they go, Maria with the slight edge. Esther having a little trouble reaching the handbike. Maria well on her way down the beam. Esther closing the gap, though. Kind of gets hung up there for a second, but she has made it to the platform safely. Maria dodges that blocking bag, but Esther falls off. Esther loses her balance, looking up at Blaze, wondering where the bag was going to come from, and this could be a serious, serious problem for her. Maria now with a fairly healthy lead on Esther, remember she needs to win by three and a half seconds to assure herself of a place in the quarterfinals. And it looks like she's on her way. Down the zip line she comes. She has to cross that white line. Got a little off beat there, but she's back on now. And here comes in back. Over the hurdle <laughs> and right over ice. <laughs> 
Hester crossing the wide line, a little tuckered out. But what an effort by the 37-year-old college professor from Arizona. And finally, getting across, and there's one tired lady, Mike. And Maria has successfully come from behind to win it. Professor, you have just earned your PhD, your doctorate in Eliminatorology. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but I feel like I've been through an ordeal, that's for sure. Graduate school, teaching is never this tough. It was terrific, Esther. Thanks. We enjoyed your performance. Thanks. Maria, you go on to the quarterfinals, and uh, obviously this was something you thought about prior to the competition, that when you got to the Gladiator at the wall, that you were going to do a complete 360 in midair and land on the back side. I planned it. I, that was the only way I knew I would get through clean without any contact with them. Piece of cake. aerobics class. I mean, oh, it was nothing. It was nothing. Maria, you're going out of the quarters. Congratulations. Thank you. And check out this aerobics class leap as she clears right over top of Ice's head and does a one-point landing right on her head on the floor. Well, congratulations to Maria Nickting, who advances with a 79-45 victory. The men are up next, where Lincoln leads Nate by a comfortable 29 points. That means that Nate would have to beat Lincoln by 14 and a half seconds. And in Nate Foster's defense, we should mention, in case you missed it, he was an alternate. Dwayne Thomas had to scratch because of an eye injury after the assault. He inherited no points at that point, and that's why he trails by as many as he does. Lincoln in the blue, Nate Foster in the red. Lincoln very quick. His skills as a stunt man very much in evidence. Working his way across the balance beam. Both men make it. Now Nate has a slight lead. Side by side they go up the cargo net. Lincoln reaches the top first. Now the fun part, the zip line. Contenders get a chance to catch their breath at that point. Nate never saying die, he's hanging in there and hanging tough. Oh, leap by Lincoln. <laughs> Taking a page out of Maria Nickting's book with a flying leap as Nate Foster finally crosses the finish line. I'll tell you what, I think Lincoln Simon's got more air than Maria did. Dangerous move, but successful. Larry? Nate, tough day. Come in as substitute, uh, picked up a few points. We're going great guns in the Eliminator, and then you ran into a fella named uh, Gemini. Yeah. Um, he I, was down low, had his shoulder yeah, planted. I thought I'd do a lot better. And I was a little disappointed in the beginning from the treadmill. But uh, this is supposed to be a great event for me, and <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know, it happens. Nate, I think you did fine, really. You come in there, you got a few points. We'll have to wait and see how it comes out in the quarterly finals. Of course, it's based on points, but uh, you look good, I think. Thanks, sir. Lincoln, what a job. I mean, you've been a point leader all day, and then you come to the grand finale here, the Eliminator, and you do a superb job of just flying right over top of laser, I believe. I, I thought that was just the best approach. They're, they're so low, and just try to, you know, if I could clear them and roll and hit that end mark the best way I could, so. All over in one piece. Well, congratulations, and, and congratulations again on going to the quarterly final. All right, thank you, Larry. Good job, fellas. And football coaches, if you're looking for some short yardage specialists, how about Lincoln Simons and Maria Nickting? Congratulations to both as they advance to the quarterfinals. Congratulations to Maria Nickting and Lincoln Simons, who advanced to the quarterfinals. Here's a preview of next week's final preliminary round. Next week, the preliminary round continues as four more contenders take their first step toward becoming American Gladiator champions. Cinda Metzer, Scott Wright, Samantha Bryant, and Wesley Kent. Watch as they challenge Gemini, Diamond, Turbo, Place, and the rest of the American Gladiators. For this edition of the American Gladiators, for Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Anley saying so long from Universal Studios Hollywood.
Jones is the highwayman. And I want you. Jacko is Jello. Hey! Together. We're in salt. It's battery! Two guys out to energize your Friday. Watch us! Heading your way this Friday, the highwayman. If you were going to cook up some burgers tonight, you'd broil them on a flame, make them taste just right. So isn't it nice to know there's a place to go where they make it just as good as you can make it yourself? That's why we do it like you do it when we do it like we do it at Burger King. We do it like you would do it when we do it like we do it at Burger King. I love dinner parties. You love dinner. Should country crock go here? All that rich buttery taste. Or with the green beans. Green beans? You love green beans. Must have been your first husband. <laughs> you are my first husband. <laughs> Shed spread country crock. Rich buttery taste. Fewer calories than regular margarine and no cholesterol. For my little stain makers. Green feet. I get the stain lifter. Wow. All goes right to the stain and just lifts it away. A-L-L. It's the stain lifter. Why cook in oil, margarine, or butter? All Natural Pam adds only one-tenth the fat and calories and keeps food light and delicious. Pam Cooking Spray, because how you cook is as important as what you cook.
watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own.